for Skull in order to equalize rather than close the gap of the lead a bit. So this is very useful right now for the bros to bring this back over to the backboard. They've equalized. Can they get a lead now? The ball's taken the other way after a lie. Kim's demolition. 5BS not a great place to put that ball when the ball can go bar down. Aliyah Kim ready to punish. Oh, 5BS. Oh, he'll be so irritated with that. That's not where he wanted that ball to go. Or well, certainly if that's where he wanted it to go, it needed to hit a lot harder to bounce much further away and punish. We see Pirates. They don't miss their opportunities to punish mistakes. No, most certainly not. Mistakes are not allowed here. Uh, that That is simply a rule on the pitch when you're headed up against a team like the Orlando Pirates. Eliakim, I mean, what a well-placed shot as well. So it was dutifully out of range for the defenders. Can this shot be out of range for Cam's stop? Not quite. Eliakim, very smart from Christian W to be challenged early there because it was dangerous as soon as he left the sidewall and picked up that container of boost, but it's back in Eliakim's hand up the sidewall. Cam's to control the ball, and this is Going to offense with intent, looking for those extra touches. I like it with the back pass out the happy meal. The Pirates have great control in this game now. They do. I mean, it was quite a, it was a, it was a high paced back pass. Oh my oh. word, it's floating on the goal line. Someone finish it. Yes, you pago can get the touch. And for the first time, that was one of the very rare times we've seen Pirates completely panicked. That save from Cam smashes it down and hung on the goal line forever. And no one could get there. Your pago finally with the touch into the net. Yeah, Orlando Pirates with great control in that game, right, Greybeard? Uh, <laughs> immediately <laughs> conceding a goal. Hey, that's the last time I'll curse him like that. But, yeah, I mean, listen, Cams and 5BS both on that ball at the end. They could not, neither of them, get the touch they were looking for. Maybe this is the one that Happy Meal is searching for. Not quite. The bros have really opened the scoring line here. But can they collapse on the shot from Cams? No, Elias, Kim and Cams meet again. Yeah, turning into a deadly duo, aren't they? Uh, this time, Eli facilitating the pass and Cams with the finish and uh, de deadly effectiveness. And for the third time, they have a one goal lead. Can the bros equalize for a third time? Perhaps not right off kickoff, immediately two goals down. Oh dear, and it's trouble deep in the third game for the bros. This is what we talk about when we say the pace of play for Orlando Pirates is the quickest that we'll see on the day. It even starts right off the kickoff. The player's ready to cheat right as the ball exits the first two front runners of the kickoff and leaving no time to breathe for the bros with a two goal lead, 30 seconds and cams. Oh, <laughs> spoiling the party with the resets. It's looking well in favor of the Orlando Pirates. The bros need to climb a mountain to get back in this game. All right, Yopega almost making something happen on the other side. Can't read the pass or the, the rebound off the back wall. Yopega's up. Happy Meal's up. Happy Meal gets there first. Gets a clear, but a good pair to pressure. But you fear it's too late now. The final countdown, the last 10 seconds. It's on the wrong side of the pitch. Even if they score now, they need a, they need a kickoff miracle. And now it is too late. And Orlando Pirates have a formidable three-game lead. Absolutely wonderful. Orlando Pirates once again coming out on top, but this time not without the response from the bros. The first game they've mm. been able to score more than once. The first game they were able to equalize. They did that twice and really forcing the best out of Orlando Pirates. Uh, I say this is good for the bros to, to offer some response in this game, in this series, but Greybeard, I feel like this is just making Orlando Pirates stronger. They're being battle tested in this series, but still exceeding their limits and coming out on top. Yeah, it's kind of, you know, they're pretty much doing what they need to do to win. So, uh, you know, if, if bros do step it up, you feel like Orlando Pirates are going to find an extra gear or two or find whatever gear they need to find to reassert themselves. And they, and they made that one close, but they did what they had to do. They uh, yeah. The bros equalized twice. Then they found a way. The two-goal lead, they never let go of that. But it is, uh, it's been a very, very good performance from the Pirates.
It's been a great performance from them. And, you know, let's also highlight the two players that were close to 900 points in that game. Eliakim exceeding that and Cam's being at 835. You see Happy Meals sitting at 177. Is that a bad thing? Maybe not, Greybeard. The way mm -hmm. that this duo of Cam's and Eliakim have been meeting up to assist or score for each other, the give and go play that we saw earlier. I think Happy Meal's happy to take a backseat if it means giving the boost, giving the power, giving the opportunity to Cam's and Eliakim. Well, the thought that's developing in my head about, about the bros team and then in contrast, the uh, the Pirates team is, is the Pirates to me seem very clear on the roles of the players. And when each player plays, what role? Look at this. Bros are going to have a lead. Yo, Pago will put them on the board. And for the very first time, it's in the do or die match. Bros have a lead. Let's see now how the Pirates play when they're chasing the game. That's right. Sometimes teams play differently when they're on the other side of the coin. The bros may be having a stroke of confidence in this game now, but it can't turn to cockiness because, again, Orlando Pirates, they will be ready and prepared to punish as they have earlier on. Already on a possession here. Cam stealing boost. Not the ball, though. Allowing Christian W for a light clear. IPS up next with a container of boost, trying to get every single extra touch that he possibly can to utilize those resources effectively. But the Ooh. drop down pass in the hands of Cam's almost in off of the crossbar. Happy Meal trying to press the issue, but the bros do find a way out. Yeah, the, the duo of Cam's and Eli looking to partner up again almost comes out, but it is saved. Defended, cleared out by the bros. Cam's with an unusual and rare mistake. It is cleaned up, though, by Eli, and it will go into the orange corner. Now it's high and loose in the midfield. Happy Meal has an empty net, and yeah, he loves patrolling that halfway line, and he picks up the high, loose ball and bangs it home. Pirates level up. <laughs> Happy Meal really is the, the guardian of the the midfield, the, the half-court line that saying, you shall not pass. And, you know, only when there's an opening like that will he say, oh, well, all right, I'll score it, I guess. So Happy Meal there for the shot taking as well. Has also, I'll give Happy Meal credit, been trying to set up double taps all series long. The mm. bros who have had a presence on the backboard all this series have been clamping down on that. But any team that is not as uh, maybe observant of those double tap opportunities, Happy Meal is spoiling the party. So he's happy to take that goal, equalize. We're tied up at 1-1. Yeah, I think uh, Happy Meal, I think few appreciate the role he plays. You know, you have your naturally gifted players, players like to die for or, uh, or Eli on this team. Uh, but Happy Meal has to work hard for, for, for the skill he has. But with those sorts of players, they, they develop a very deep understanding for the game. And it's that knowledge, that experience he now has that is so invaluable to the success of this team. Always knowing what position to play, where to present themselves on the field to instill and establish that dominance for Orlando Pirates. It's been a dominant series so far. 3-0 in their favor, but the bros uh, doing a little more than hanging on. Forcing still the best out of Orlando Pirates and what we could possibly see from them for every single win. Happy Meal looking to control this ball to try and get themselves back in the lead. Cam's presses this forward, but... Nothing to come of it. Eliakim does see Cam's again. Is it the give and go? Eliakim trying to use the boost to get back to this ball off of the post. Christian gets it away, but that was looking lethal. Man, that was a, such a gorgeous play. It doesn't result in the goal. And I think this is the hardest working period of play we have seen from the Orlando Pirates without a goal. Eli is meanwhile breaking axles and ankles all around the field. Almost finds Cam. Cam just not quite there to find the angle. But the pressure now turning around. But they haven't found the goal yet. And that is good news for the bros. They keep pushing it away. They are now making the pirates work to find a lead. But at the same time, the bros need to find a way to get a lead of their own. And they have a brief four-way forward. Christian looking for the angle. Cam's denies. 
And the game just gets very tense at this point because we've reached like three, two, three minutes during the point at which, okay, you know, Orlando Pirates are going to get their lead back as they always have. It really has not come yet. And we're approaching that final minute where the bros with just one single goal, with just one single mistake from Orlando Pirates could take a game here. And they're looking for that opportunity. It hasn't come forward for them yet, but still time to go as 5BS reaches for the skies. Mm. There's the mistake, unfortunately, for the bros. It's on their side yeah 5bs there uh, he knew he had to get there and rushed rushed the play eli just lurking like a vulture waiting for the miss makes no mistake a minute left pirates on the cusp the precipice of a sweep it is that close 60 seconds remaining and the bros during game three had allowed for a 2-1 lead for Atlanta Pirates, but they equalized again. Can they do that here? Now is the time. Yapego looking to control this ball. Great catch and container pick up as well. He could take this across the length of the field if he so desires, unless Eliakim dare to stop the party. It's up at it again. Eliakim trying to keep the play elevated and able to... Oh, activate cams. He does get that touch, but Yopego back on the backboard. The bros giving themselves every single chance here to get back in this game. Well, it's the dying moments and this that they've been here before and they've struggled in this moment to find a way through the clutch. Christian forward looking for 5BS who can't quite make the shot, but they are still there. Christian, there's been a demo. Surely this opens things. Cams, no. Christian again in front. Yopego trying to make his way around, but Happy Meal will send it forward. Three more seconds to go. Pirates just need to hang on to possession, hang on to the ball, and now they've just got to make it bounce. It hasn't yet. Can the bros? Oh, there we go. Finally, push to the ground. Pirates take it down. An emphatic win. They had to work very hard, though, Pyro, in this last game, but they do take the 4-0. It did indeed. Orlando Pirates had to work hard in this last game and arguably throughout the entire series. I, I watched firsthand uh, the bros play against Reform, which they got swept in that series as well. But this is a team that keeps things close. This is what I've been talking about. They force the best out of their opponents because unless they put their nose to the grindstone, unless they look for those small mistakes like we saw in that last game to punish, they might lose. <laughs> they might lose that lead, and the bros can absolutely take a game. So, yeah, unfortunately, it is the end of the road for the bros, but Atlanta Pirates have a, a have a great uh, route ahead of them here after this series. All right, well, let's, let's have the post-series desk discussion and uh, your thoughts, Alt, from the, from the sidelines there. Any, any, any highlights for you? Certainly a robust performance there from Bros. You've got to give them credit. They got goals in almost every game, I think it was. Um, they were constantly looking for attacks. They had some really good defensive moments there. They seemed to kind of falter a little bit at that midfield, you know, every so often where they managed to get a really good clear or a nice good touch to shut them out. Sometimes even baiting the Orlando Pirates in just that little bit too much, but they just couldn't turn that around mm. and capitalize as many times as they would have liked to. <laughs> Greybeard. You said that this was potentially a 4-2 series. And with mm. that, with the, the fact that Bros couldn't pick up a single game, how do you feel about that? Was that Bros letting themselves out or is it just a sign of how strong the Orlando Pirates is looking right now? I, I, I think one one particular point became very clear to me. If we look at these, if we look at these teams in contrast to one another, um, Pirates are so clear on their roles. I love the fact, you know, uh, Cams is such an aggressive player, as is Eli. But man, how they are finding each other, uh, you know, uh, when they when they go forward and Happy Meal playing that role on, on the halfway line and his his deep sensibilities about the game backing up that play. By contrast, the bros, I don't think they figured out their roles yet. Yopego and Christian W, naturally very aggressive players. I don't think they figured out between them how they who's taking what role, how do they support each other? And that leaves 5BS at a bit of a scramble like, what am I supposed to do here? That for me became very clear in this series. Oh, a hundred percent. You know, that, that pure delineation, that, that really mm. good understanding of the Orlando Pirates of what they need to do. And you know, Pyro, you mentioned it there about that last game. I think it was the fact that Happy mm. Meal so low scoring consistently, but the one, two plays there from Kamen and Kim, such a devastating thing. Mm. 
is it something that you expect that strategy to work against all teams is this something that they can rely on all the time or is this something that a team might be able to beat and if so how in my opinion, Orlando Pirates are coming with a lot of different tools in their kit. Like, I talked about the fact that Happy Meal was trying to set up a lot of double taps off the backboard, but the Bros defended the backboard really well, uh, especially to some other teams in this region that I've been paying attention to. So they have to work off of some of those ground plays, those give and goes between Eli, Kim, and Cams. I thought that duo really um, surprised us and gave us more to offer because of what the bros brought forth. Uh, it was the ability of Orlando Pirates to determine what worked best for them and to enable that and activate the duo of Cams and Eliakim. It can work if it works against their current opponents, but to me, it's just another tool in the kit that they have to use. So many tools at the disposal of the Orlando Pirates, like you say, and unfortunately for bros, not able to really find a niche in that armor right now. Uh, is going to have to be a, a sad ending to the weekend for them. They certainly would have liked to have given a little bit more gumption there to be able to pick up a game. But well played to them. They managed to get the top eight like mm -hmm. they wanted to at the beginning of this. Massive congratulations to one of the newest teams and newest organizations to join this RLCS rosters. And so a massive, massive shout out to the bros side. Keep working. A lot of potential there. Gravian, moving forward though, it is now going to be ATK versus Orlando Pirates meeting up tomorrow. That is a clash that we've come to see going all the way. And I know you get so frustrated to see that game. You're like, Orlando Pirates should clean that out a little bit sooner. Well, it comes down to the, the, the hot and coldness of ATK. Are, are they going to blow hot tomorrow or are they going to blow cold? Uh, if they blow hot, they can challenge Orlando Pirates. But uh, seeing them here and you ask the question is their strategy effective against all other teams maybe not everybody but i think it might work very well against atk indeed uh pyro your last question to wrap up this series bros doing so well they've obviously got a lot of individual skills what is it going to take for them to break that top four considering we're now starting to really load that top level you've got reform who's very mm -hmm. seriously cemented themselves at the top you got a team like red crown who's now looking to also go hey we're taken very seriously here that fight for even just the top four position is incredibly contested I think it's a couple things. Number one is consistency. The reason they lost that game four was because of the miss off the sidewall that Eli Kim just punished immediately. It's going to happen against the top teams. And if you want to uh, contend against those top teams, you need more consistency on defense. I want to see this uh, offense activated, though. Uh, we, we've seen them do a great job denying the aerial abilities of Orlando Pirates by having that backboard defense. The quick challenges on Eli Kim as he's coming off of the sidewall as well. The defense in the air looked good from the bros. But what about the offense? We've seen Christian W, a great sharpshooter from the ground, but I haven't seen many backboard plays, passes coming out of the bros. Maybe that's something they could utilize to look a little more lethal on offense and contend against those top teams. Well, guys, we've heard about what bros needs to do in the future, but let's head over to our interview. We do have Happy Meal here, obviously a person not afraid of interviews, certainly well-versed in what it means to sit in front of the camera as the winning team. And congratulations, Happy Meal. You must be ecstatic that you've secured that top four quite comfortably. Mm, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's always good, like moving up in the tournament. Yeah, the team's very happy. Uh, I think there's a lot of work to do still, but yeah, for now. It's, uh, it's an easy day for us. I mean, like, you know, one game, then we, we take the day off, and then we prepare for tomorrow. So, yeah, I don't mean easy as, like, the opposition. <laughs> that's, not, that's not what I meant. <laughs> well, happy meal. I will say it's great to have you back on the interview uh, here this season for RLCS for SSA. I, I think it's it's an absolute privilege when we get to be able to ask you these questions. I do want to dive into this series that you just played against the bros. There was one game where your two teammates were working close to 900 points and you were leaning almost to 200. Um, but it's not to, to the fault of yours, in my opinion. I mean, your, your teammates were just doing great work and your team itself was succeeding how do you kind of look at that game that result when you look at the scoreboard and say is that exactly what we planned or are you happy with that result i mean obviously we won the game so that's the first uh, first thing to look at um so obviously i, I don't you know making excuses is not uh, something that i think is, is really worth anyone's time but my controller is currently like broken um i'm struggling a lot and uh, I, I have a spare, like a brand new controller that's on my desk. But the problem is swapping to a brand new controller. It's not easy. Like it's it's also, it's almost as bad as playing with a broken one. 
So I have to make a choice. Like, do I play? I don't know. It's really tough. I'm making a decision. And tomorrow is like a really important day. So tonight I'm going to be uh, making that decision. So um, I, I wouldn't say it affects my game completely. I think I can play the game. I, I mean, there are some plays where it doesn't matter, especially in the air. The air is easier for me. It's not as sensitive. On the ground, it's really bad. I can't make touches. I can't shoot. Uh, I don't want to say that's the reason why I got 200 points, but it's definitely the reason why I wasn't as impactful as I think I could have been. But my teammates are insane. Like they're they're good enough to play without me. I mean, I just need to facilitate. I've I've done this in the past. Like uh, on, on my on, when when David was on the team, um, mm -hmm. I'll be honest. Like they were. I was I would say I was a good play. You know, I don't I don't discredit me at all. But those two were, were something else. Mm -hmm. Like they they would set up most of the offensive plays. I would just support them. And I'm I'm used to that role. I've, I'm working really hard this season to not just be forced into that role. But yeah, I, I've played it for a lot for like an entire season. I know how to play that role. And if that's what I'm going to play just to make sure we win, I'll do it. I'll do it just for the win. I don't care. So the fact that I got 200 points and they have 800 doesn't matter. We won the game, and mm -hmm. it's not like we we. I mean, there was some. I won't like we we weren't playing. Um, we were a little bit complacent. I'd say that 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 particular series. I think we we thought it was an easy win for us. So we were a little bit lazy on the field. So there were some mistakes, some stupid decisions here and there. But I don't think there was. Uh, we didn't lose a single game in that whole series. So we did fine. We did mm -hmm. we did enough to win. Um, and that's that's what I think is is the the end goal there. But yeah, that's why I think I had 200 points in that a thousand each. Absolutely. All right. Well, I think the, the the controller issue is simple. When you play tomorrow, you just change your name. You call yourself Happy Meal, and then new controller yeah, yeah, brackets. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> that's how that's how it's done. Then we all know what's what. Yeah, that's the play. <laughs> so, so my question is feeds in, I think, to what you've just been saying. What, what seemed clear to me, um, I, and and I don't know if this is something you discuss and you practice or or, or, or how it goes, but it seems that there's some clarity on the roles of the team you know daisy is an amazing defensive player cams i beg your pardon is an amazing defensive player but also very good aggressively eli we know is is loves being up front and and they're linking up and and you seem to, you are that support player who makes make sure and kind of controls it is that something you've discussed in terms of the roles of each of you in 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 how you play uh, that's a very good question so I wouldn't say it's something we've decided that, okay, half mil, you are playing third man role and you're supporting each other. Like that's not really mm -hmm. what's been decided. It's more about, okay, well in the past, when 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 there's a situation where myself or Cams or Eli can go, um, it's 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 proven in the past that almost always they do more more on the ball than I will do in terms of offensively. So I prioritize them when I, so if there's a situation where they need boost and, and I also need boost, but we both can take that particular, I'll let them take it. Um, not because I don't think I, I don't, not because I don't have confidence in my own abilities. I certainly do. I think I'm a selfish player sometimes. Like I really do back <laughs> myself in the solo place. Like I, I think mm. I, I'm also a good player in that aspect, but they're just simply better. That's the bottom line. They are better. So mm. therefore I prioritize them. Um, I, I wouldn't say it was, it's a role that's been discussed, but I've been placed in this role, I guess you could say. Mm. I'm working really hard to not be defined by it. And I want to be as, as good as I can be in every aspect. Like I want to be also as good when I'm on the ball to be scoring. But mm. right now and in the past, like that seems to be, not my strong suit and that's okay I'm, i mean I'll, again i'll do whatever it takes to to win mm. so if the team needs a facilitator i'm happy to be it well winning well winning you certainly are i mean pyro j did say it earlier that just the the one two plays that reliance on casey and uh, on cam and like him in the front line is just one part of your team's toolkit it's mm. one of those things that you can start with and then if you need to step up and get involved with the play because it's uh, you know an injured time of pressure then you can step up and i think that that's definitely a, a really powerful aspect that you don't need to be involved in every play and can still get these sort of results so well done to that looking forward though you now have one of the the weirdest matchups for you guys you know one that you seem to have some sort of mental block where atk i mean you've had to come back from one game down two games down and reverse sweep atk taking it to a game five very often against them is there something about ATK in particular, their play style, or are you feeling confident about tomorrow's game? Mm, I guess I'll answer both questions. I, firstly, yes, confidence. I mean, I, we haven't lost them yet, so like that is good for us. Um, the games are close, and that's something that we acknowledge as a team, and we've discussed it very, very closely, and we're, we're on top of why. Um, I think, personally, the, the, a big reason what it, what 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 make like us against ATK such as such a strange matchup is that they are very very good almost I think better than maybe make or take nuts at capitalizing off the mistakes we're making as soon as we make a mistake they'll almost score like they're very good at they're a very good counter attack team I think that's a very strong aspect of their game so and I'll be honest we are 
pretty flat. I, would, I wouldn't say we're too flashy, but we're a pretty flashy team. You know, like we go for the ball, control it in the air. Like that's that's what we do. And, and, and it's sort of play oriented, very heavy. Control the ball, keep the ball close to us, and then um, offload to another player. That's our that's our that's our that's our go-to strategy, right? But I mean, obviously, I, I'm not gonna give you everything. But it's 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 a it's a big <laughs> it's a big part of our game. And there's a lot of um, it's the margin for error is so huge in that play style that if ATK are very good at countering it. And they are. They're going to score a lot of goals against us. That's why the games are close. I mean, they're a good team as well. I don't even want to give like they're a good team. They're they're a solid contender this year, and it's uh, it's going to make uh, this matchup tomorrow very interesting. But in the best of seven, I think we have it. I, do, I personally think that uh, the best of fives are really tense because if you go two games down, it's it's like it's really it's just so mentally like straining to to mm -hmm. come back. But the best of seven is something else. Um, I think like we have a lot of experience just winning our best of sevens against many teams. So I think we got. Yeah, those long series create great opportunities for the better team to come out in the end. And I agree with the solo play caliber, the flashy caliber of your team as well, Happy Meal. I mean, even you were setting up so many double taps during that last series. I felt like the backward defensive bros were just taking it away again and again. But I mean, I, I see the grind that you're putting in to be that player as well. Um, I'm maybe criticized for this, but I want to take it even farther than ATK. I am so curious about you guys getting a revenge tour against May Contain Nuts, especially after they have fallen in one series mm. can you give us a little bit of a teaser i, I don't want the full game <laughs> breakdown analysis of how you're gonna defeat them don't spoil okay. the cards but maybe a teaser as to what you're looking forward to if that matchup occurs mm, I, I guess i was gonna first say that's a very good team um which obviously we've scrimmed them you know since since day one like since that team started they're a very good team and just individually, all three of those players are very, very good. So, like, firstly, the matchup is always—I'm always looking forward to because it it's incredibly challenging. I mean, like, you make a simple mistake here, yeah, and then the one player's on the ball, and it's a counter, and it's a goal. It's, it's crazy. Um, so, but in terms of what, what I mean, I if the finals happen, like, obviously, if we match up, it'll be in the grand finals. That's just the way the bracket is. So, um, if the grand finals occur, it's both myself, uh, our team, and 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 Slurry's team, or Make or Take Nuts. Uh, I think. I think a, a, a result better than 4-0 is definitely something we're fighting for. I think uh, for losing 4-0 to them, even though we, as a team, we didn't put, like, we looked at the replays, we went over that, and there was a lot of good things in our game, and we were very impressed. I mean, that's a supposed super team on paper, right? That's what I was calling them. So losing 4-0, I mean, that's kind of, I guess you can say it's expected in quotation marks or whatever, but for us, like, we are not looking to come second. We want to become mm. first. We also have very nice. good players, and I think we're also a very talented roster. So working really hard and 4-0 is just not sitting well with us. I don't think that's that's uh, that's a good uh, a good indicator of what actually was going on in that game and that series. Mm -hmm. uh, as for reform being them, I mean that's crazy. Well done to them. I don't know what was going on. Uh, I mean I don't know I, if reform had some crazy strategy or they just kryptonite to a team like that. I have no idea. I, I can't tell you what the problem is. Uh, just congratulations <laughs> to them and we're gonna follow in their footsteps, I guess. Well, all right well we we will see how it plays out and i'm i'm gonna let you go congratulations and okay. and and maybe maybe we talk to you again tomorrow maybe not we'll see how it plays but either way go out there and give them hell thank you very much oh, i kind of love that happy meal one of those players that we just love so much and is so good on the in the community he gives credits mm. to all the other teams he's got such respect for his fellow teammates and for his oppositions and every time they match up uh, really glad to see them doing so well and feeling so confident as a unit. We wish them all the best for tomorrow. And again, one more time, a sad farewell goes to bros, but that's the nature of getting to this pointy end of any of these brackets. We have to say goodbye to some teams at some stage. And uh, like they, uh, like Happy Meal just said, they don't want to go 4 nil down to make contain nuts. I'm pretty sure uh, bros will want to come back next time and put on an even better showing than they managed to put on today. That is it for me as host though. I'm gonna be handing over to Greybeard for our next series. That's gonna come back just after a very short intermission. I'll be joining you as caster for the last series of the day. Make sure you don't go anywhere. We are halfway through the day right now. Still to come, may contain nuts versus White Rabbit Gaming at team uh, a match with potential for some upsets. Um, Wide Rabbit Gaming still waiting to see where they really peak out at. And then one of the toughest matchups of the day, potentially Reformed versus Apex Gaming. Can Reformed carry on that incredible skill that they showed yesterday? Or does Apex really want to rally from that eighth seeded position? If you want to find out any of that action, you'll have to join us just after this break.
And we are back. We are halfway through the day, halfway through the quarterfinals in the SSA RLCS Fall Cup. I'm taking over as host, and I've got Jota, uh, our former stats champion, now analyzing and casting, and Muzz makes his return to the desk. Jota, welcome back. Yes, it's, 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 it's been a lot, it's been a lot less uh, straightforward than the, than the last one. Well, actually, that's not true. We've had a 4-1 and then we've had a 4-0, which is very similar to the last quarterfinals. But Muzz, you must be enjoying this load shedding free day. Oh, can I? Yeah, I can tell you, Grabia, <laughs> that has been absolutely superb to not be struck here by the powers that be that keep us out. But yeah, just to enjoy a full day two of Rocket League has been beautiful. All right, fine. Well, let's have a let's have a quick look at the brackets. If uh, production are ready with that, just to see where we are, we've pretty much completed the bottom half of the bracket. Uh, Pirates XD four nothing over the Bros, and earlier on Red Crown, the surprise of the day. Well, let's call it an upset. I think all of us, well, certainly the desk, were backing Red Crown to take it, but they go down four one to eighty k. Pirates and eighty k in the semis for tomorrow. So the top four not is already different to what it was last regional and uh, i i don't know what you were thinking about uh former mtg now red crown jota and and was that a surprise to you an upset in your mind Mm. all righty i see in chat that there might be an issue with uh with sound but um, i'm sure reverse has got that sorted i hope are, 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 are we back with sound no is that with me is that with me reverse or Jota's Jota needs to unmute herself in Ninja. Okay, cool. Um, all right, fine. Well, we'll we'll come back to Jota, but let's focus our attention now to to the game in front of us. May contain nuts up against uh, White Rabbit Gaming. White Rabbit Gaming making it into quarters, so that's good for them. And then May contain nuts. Bizarrely finishing fourth in Swiss, which no one would have predicted at the start. Does this mean was that just an off night for them, Muzz, or does that open up a window for White Rabbit Gaming? I mean, I think there's opportunities that can be grabbed here, uh, Greybeard. You know, Reform Death, they 3 and 0 straight through that Swiss, and of course, beating MCN. And uh, maybe White Rabbit Gaming here see a, a small little gaping hole they can, they can slowly start scratching at, and we can see, you know, do they have something in them to take a game off these guys? But of course, we know Snowador doesn't like to lose all too often, and mm. so he's going to be rearing to go here, and he wants to, you know, continue his path through and get into those semifinals and i think it's going to be a tough uphill battle here for white rabbit game okay. probably able to take one game off of them but possibly not the series all right well i see already in the in in, in chat we have the hashtags going so let's get the fan vote rolling hashtag mcn hashtag wrg for your predictions who do you think is going to take this one down um and while while the votes are coming in there jota if we've if we've got your mic sorted and i hope we do um do you have a prediction for yourself on who takes this down is this the start of a start of a wobble for mcn or do they put it behind them and get back to business as usual No, okay, okay, J Jota, 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 okay, so your mic, for some, we can hear you, I can hear you, because it's coming through Discord, but not through Ninja, so we're going to sort out our technicals, but uh, Muzz, let's get the prediction from you. It, I mean, more than likely, it's going to be, uh, may, may contain nuts, apologies, this. it should be them, right, they, they just are still the strongest team here on paper, they are that kind of super team that everyone has uh, spoken about, their Grebeard, and I think it's just going to be a tough, 
you know, battled here for White Rabbit Gaming to be able to pick mm. up, you know, the overall series winner. So, you know, I'm going to be able to take the easy answer here and say may contain nuts. All right, fine. Well, while we sort out the issues with Jota, Jota, you can tell me who you're predicting and I'll, I'll put that forward and then, uh, and then and we'll see how we go. <laughs> okay, so Jota says a big may contain nuts, and that's fair enough. Do we have do we have a result from the uh, fan vote? We'll see that. But look at the let's have a look at the comparison here. Goals, uh, goals, shots, saves, losses, very much heavily favoured towards may contain nuts. So White Rabbit certainly got their work cut out for them as as we go forward to this, and uh, uh, and I think we I think we'll see the results muzz in a in a second of of the fan vote but looking at it there where there's certainly support for white rabbit gaming which is probably their own fans but i think realistically they do take it but uh but maybe maybe a massive upset here in quarterfinal day now 54 percent going there to white rabbit gaming so mm. fans absolutely coming in thick there on the chat and they want white rabbit game to be victorious here over may contain that's gray beard mm. All right, fine. Well, I think with a game is pretty much ready to go, and uh, if and, and and so I think let's go over to the casters. If 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 Jota's is not sorted, I'll 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 carry it until until we are sorted. If, if that is. Required. think is these what, what i'm hoping to see here i mean on any on any day it may contain that should be taking this for nothing but but maybe I, I'd, I'd like to see a massive fight here from uh from the white rabbit gaming team who've had a bit of an up and down i think i think they haven't been completely happy with their performances but maybe maybe this is the time for them to turn it all around yeah, we're going to have to see if they're going to be able to fight off quite a strong MCN roster. But here we go, Greybeard. On to our game number one in this quarterfinals game. And already pressure there. Slightly been applied by main containers, but we has already been able to get that one out now. Kino! Oh, he's trying to put a bit of pressure on. Almost takes a shot there. Kept out by that crossbar. Casper as well taking the shot though. Kept out. So, so far 0-0 zero, zero in a very early game attempt here from both sides. All right, and uh, yeah, may contain nuts with a bit of defensive duties to do early on. Oh, my word, now a smashing shot smacks the crossbar right in the corner, down and out. White Rabbit Gaming survive, but my word, uh, whoo, early, early trouble averted for the White Rabbits. Yep, Kino there with the decent save, though. And we're going to see, you know, if may contain nuts have just had a small speed wobble. Okay, we Casper able to put one in there off the hands of friction. Wow. Okay, so to die for gets gets out gets completely smashed on the fifty fifty, and we Casper a wide open net to die for. Going to be a little bit irritated by that, but it is White Rabbit Gaming with the early lead. May contain nuts. Will be smarting after that loss to reformed last night and will be wanting to make a point but they're gonna have to have work to do but a long distance shot here it's friction who makes his way back gets the save but the rebound found by snowy nuts level it up and well, it's pretty much an open goal up until that point and of course friction had to try push it back onto his own walls and of course snowy quick to read the ball able to score that goal and that's kind of one thing we do know about this roster to die for snowy and darth very quick on the ball they get into your defensive third as three players and they're all able to take a shot and economize off your off of your mistakes and so we saw that there's snowy hunting that ball waiting all right, and now another attempt is pushed away. It is saved. Kino, long distance clear. I'm not sure if he was intending to pinch it that far, but that far it went. And to die for! Oh, my word, the air dribble! And he gets a block right in front of the net, and Daft can come swooping in to get the second. And now it's the Nuts who have a lead. Oh, 
to dive for beautifully off that left hand wall they basically took it the whole entire way kino was in the box so it did push it out and of course again darts being quick to follow up as that second man put this one home so there we go make contain nuts they you know they weren't trailing for all too long Greybeard, and now already up by uh one goal two goals though on their scoreboard and you know this is the team that we uh we know and love and that are so incredibly strong here in ssa yeah, but it isn't a run. It isn't a runaway situation yet. WRG nope. certainly still in it. Kino trying to get something set up by way of a flip reset doesn't get it. And now on the other side, my word, the pace, the sheer pace over there, almost undoing the WRG defense. And now they managed to get it over to the other side, but not for too long. So, and as long as you know, I've always I, I say this often is that as long as as long as it's a one goal game, and that's got to be a massive priority for WRGs. Don't concede again. Keep it one goal, because then you're always always in it. And uh, so far they're succeeding with that. As we come up to halfway in their pursuit of undoing, becoming only the second team uh, in the weekend to undo make on day nuts. What a tough task it is for this team here in blue to die for trying to bring it down there does he find snowy oh that's gonna go just left of oh, the goals friction also finding a demo they onto to die for quick counter attack here nothing that's gonna go in a little bit of a wide ball weak cast but from that left hand side finds the backboard friction from kino that beautiful corner play can he get the dunk down he doesn't find a second man friction taking that shot we casper is there as well to die for hanging up in the air waiting ever so patiently just to push out any attacks that do come from white river gaming and now darth down that right hand flank though does meet weak casper gets past him kino last one in the box Ooh, no shot coming in there from making pay nuts yeah i think that it was just to die for rushing in there looking to put pressure on the last man back who had to get a touch on that it may be something here but friction gets up defends the backboard but i'm i'm, I'm liking the fight so far but let's not forget snowy's team uh you know along with darth and skill steel last season now now with to die for they they do they do seem to like to take a running start at a rocket league series so if they do look vulnerable it's often in that first game but uh and and but they are leading here and, and i assume they're going to get stronger and better as it goes on but for the time being white rabbit still keeping it within one goal and that is very good for them as we enter into the last minute and they go in pursuit of trying to do something against may contain nuts can they pick up this equalizer and possibly force our overtime here to die for gets that demo onto we casper instrumental Dolph here up this wall wants to try beat out kino frictions here as well so they need to clear this ball out of their own defensive third can they do so they're going to go down this right hand flank we cast but a fight doth off there but to die for let's find them on the midway line decent pass out to doth is going to possibly snipe their hundred as well friction in fact does pick up his own hundred from the corner we cast but off this back wall a little bit of a precarious situation can he get over one he does can't beat out doth however snow it is there in the corner brings it down won't find a second man but the nose of friction to die for still on the opposing side there they are up by one and they are leading so far they don't have to score here but it would be nice Oh, and, oh, they almost do it. And now WRG got to keep it up. They're doing okay with that so far. But possession on the wrong side. Casper's up, tries to get there and intercept. To die for, happy to keep it up. The ball remains in the air. It's still high, heading toward the main contain nuts. It's now the ball is killed. And the nuts team are the winners oh. of game one. They, <laughs> they have, they've taken first blood here. And I think, and I think we are good. I'm just waiting on confirmation from Reverse. I think we've got Jota back, and she can take this. Okay, we can take this over from game two. So I'll head out over to you, Jota and Muzz. Hello, right. hello, oh Jota, good to have you with us. It's 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 like I never left, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know what? I'll tell you, absolute hands off to the producers behind the scenes because they quickly patched that one up and brought you in okay so game number one is already done and dusted their jota and may contain nuts maybe surprised to no one that did take uh, that victory yeah but maybe surprised to some that they've taken 16 shots for two goals not the sort of ratio that we're used to seeing oh, out of them right you sort of you you expect dominance you expect high shooting figures from them 
I think that it's probably more a play style thing than an accuracy thing. I think a lot of those shots, they weren't trying to score. They were just quite happy to blast them at the defense and stretch them around. Oh, yeah. And I mean, they want to apply that pressure here onto White Rabbit Game, who, of course, did start off that game with the lead. They had the beautiful opener of the series. But here we go. Game number two. And of course, on Aquadome, which seems to be, you know, there seems to be a lot of RNG, as mentioned there uh, earlier by Greybeard Jokes. I don't know if luck really plays too much of a part here in Rocket League. I think it's always a factor, but often the phrase to say you make your own luck well not really one that makes sense because it can't it feels like it can't be luck if you make it it is the case if you pepper the backboard enough if you put pressure on then things will start to open up the unfortunate bounces will go your way if you're the one creating the chances snowy an awkward clear out but yeah i mean look sometimes when you have a favorite and an underdog it's this, this easy narrative you push, right? You say, hey, the underdog takes a game or two, they'll rattle the upper team, they'll put some pressure on them, they'll get scared. But you just know that you can't scare off make and tain nuts. You can take a couple games from them and the next one will be just as hard all the way. They know that they are in for a very long slog if they want to get this one, but they're going about it the right way to get off to a good start here in game two. You feel if they're to come back in the series, they better get started early. You don't want to be making big comebacks and what a difference it could make if they could build on this early lead in game two. Oh, and just the three touches that took place there. Snowy defensively trying to put the ball down does find friction in the corner and friction very quickly able to pass in field to Kina to score that goal. So once again here, White Rabbit Gaming taking the lead in a game and uh we're gonna see if this does bode well for them of course make contain that's able to so quickly and decisively come back and score goals here snowy already looking for the dunk off of darts pass though kept out by kina once again playing all the way from mozambique oh boy it would be something you have white rabbit game and can pick up a few games or even win here against main contain nuts but balls coming in hot oh casper having to push that one out to the left hand side and now with a quick counter attack here oh to die for there very easily able to get into the face of that ball yeah it feels so great to be coming out and getting a lead against main contain nuts until suddenly you realize that four minutes is a heck of a long time it's gonna feel like a very very long game for them it's enough time for make and Tain nuts to just patiently build their offense like normal. They know that they don't need to rush. They're experienced with positions like this. Snowy, take his time, pops it in field to death, and you can see they're building up. They're not rushing their offenses. They're quite happy to just slowly build pressure. Snowy in the corner, a permanent danger. He had no boost. You can never count him out, though. And that is what White Rabbit Gaming, they've had the answer to it. They stayed alert, but they're going to need to stay alert the whole game because the threat is constant. You actually can't doze off for even a second against a team like May Contain Nuts because they just take those opportunities and they absolutely squeeze the life out of you. And so you have to be, you know, full tilt from the beginning until the end yeah but still white rabbit gaming leading by one looks pretty darn good for them at the moment yeah snow trying to push the ball into an advantageous position did find kina though is able to push it all the way back oh casper with the demo on to the die for as well tries to get the flick over one dartho has to make that save white rabbit gaming well this new roster for this new season looking pretty sharp wouldn't you say so jota yeah, I really felt that after that first goal, it immediately went from, you know, quite an open game to they were holding on to the lead. As soon as they scored, it was all offense from May Contain Nuts. I thought this is only be a matter of time, but that immediate demo counterattack opportunity, all the run of play was against them. But to be honest, they've had the best two scoring chances this game. They put away one of them. That other one, the defense was able to scramble back, but it does show there's always a lot more to it than that snowy not nearly pushing through though i think it's going to take a monumental effort on defense to get through this one still but that counterattack showed me a spark of something special that actually there is always a chance of them breaking out and making something happen not this time though there's only so much chance you get to do that if to die for slotting it in the top corner Oh, and Snowy going straight for the bump there. Gets that ball to come across the face, goes for the bump, and then sets up to die for 
for a lovely goal. And finally, we get to see after about 9 to 10 shots as well, mind you, that may contain us can finally get onto the scoreboard. I mean, you you know, you said it as you came on. They are peppering shots towards those goals and just nothing going in and sinking just yet. But here we are. We found that equalizer through to die for. Can make contain us pick up game number two. Or should we see White Rabbit Game and get our equalizer? It would be nice. Snowy taking it an attempt, but we Casper getting into his face. Yeah, it's almost psychologically tougher for White Rabbit than if they just can see a kickoff goal or something. Because they defended for so long, they kept them out for two full minutes, and eventually the pitch has started to open up against them. It's always a challenge when you've been stuck on defense that long. It's so disheartening for them to finally break through. And then it put them in a really difficult position. Do they push? Do they keep trying to wait for counterattacks? They were clearly trying to play a bit more front foot. Now the game was back leveled up and they got bitten by Darth immediately. And it could be a third. The floodgates might be opening here to die for a rare overhit pass. But it really does seem like they contain nuts. They're getting back into their rhythm now. Oh, they are indeed their Darth just taking shot after shot right now. He's already put forward towards the goals here of White Rabbit Gaming and they're, you know, being taken a barrage from making tennis. But there we go. Kino trying to pick up that equalizer. Wasn't able to Darth. Does keep it on to die for. He's going to try to take it all the way around the back. They just need to put this ball down to pick up game number two. They should be able to, but it is up. Four now by friction. Snowy. Oh, Kino. They are up. There's going to be a second man coming in. I mean, it's still up here, Joda. There's hope. <laughs> there is hope, but you also have to stop the tough scoring to begin with. I think that was indeed the clincher. That felt like that should have dropped about four times before. That is so confident it was down, and yet it was not. But you know what? It's quite similar to last game, really. Two games in a row where May contain Nuts have had a barrage of shots, yet only scored two, one by two, one. It's it, it's a tough spot for White Rabbit because as a competitor, as all of these are, they're strong competitors, you are always frustrated with a loss. You always want better. You can lose to anyone. You can lose to Prime BDS and you're still going to come out and be like, oh man, we lost. But there have to be some positives to be taken despite being 2-0 down. You think this is a good display rule from right Rabbit? Yeah, I mean, just defensively doing, doing so incredibly well that we can see how many saves they had to make because there were so many shots they're coming out from May Contain Nuts. But in fact, that scoreline, just a little bit more in the favor of White Rabbit Gaming. They're holding onto the ball. They get in touches there, Jota. And so, you know, there is signs of life for them. But of course, they're playing against such incredibly tough opponents. And so... You know, the storyline of what we're going to see this weekend is that games are way too close, right? Only losing within one, I mean, it can definitely be anyone's game. It can. The fear is I can very easily see them taking a game with the current play style where, you know, they steal a goal like they did on the counterattack and then they just hold on for dear life. They grip tight and do not let go. I find it hard to imagine in the current flow of play them taking four full games. Like It seems like such a mammoth task for them to really cling on and get over the line for a full five minutes. To imagine it happening four times really does feel difficult. I would like to see maybe some sort of change up from them, but yeah, it's, it's really hard to suggest what to do, right? Because like everyone has a plan until May Contain Nuts come and put up 15 shots against you. Yeah, I mean, they just send shot after shot towards them here. Can we see White Rabbit Gaming once again open the scoring as we have seen in the past two games? There, Doth does take the shot. Though. Kino doing superbly well at the back just to be keeping those shots out. Kino again does pick up a Doth. Already picks it up on this left-hand flank. He tries to get past one. Casper's there on the corner. And Snowy will be able to shoot into the bottom right-hand corner. Yeah, it's a really lovely piece of arrow. Doth faked getting under that. And then flip round back onto the wall. Really sent the defender with the angle of his first jump. That was not the anticipated touch. It looked like an immediate infield pass. Instead, take it back onto the wall. Created the delay. And as soon as your front man is hesitating at that front post because they're getting confused by what the opponent's doing, it means the player behind is a sitting duck right there, sat there waiting, like saying, come on, mate, you've got to go. You're in front of me. What are you doing? And they both end up on top of each other, not able to deal with the play. 
and for the first time in the series, it is a lead coming in out of the K2 main contain. That's somehow, despite being 2-0 up, they have conceded first in both games 1 and 2. Not the case this time. Y you would think that that's not likely to be an, a good omen for White Rabbit Gaming here, despite the fact that they lost after scoring first. Oh, I mean, Kino took a shot there with Casper causing an interference in the box there. Almost gave us our equalizer. Now we Casper and Kino again. Up front, trying to cause a little bit of mayhem here. Oh, they bring it down to die for it. Does pick up the demo onto Friction as well. And Snowy bringing that one all the way through the middle, but nothing came of it. Friction sends it backfield, but Darth is waiting there. We Casper with the interception. Can he send it towards goals to die for hanging back? And able to save that one and white rabbit gaming trying incredibly hard to put a goal in against mcn and now friction and casper both there in this corner they're gonna try bring it up but snow is already there can he pop it midfield for a second play doesn't seem to be the case white rabbit gaming fighting tooth and nail just to stop this barrage of uh, shots that are coming in here Darth does take that one to die for now can he get the second touch off of the back wall, he won't follow up though. Oh my goodness, Darth as well, kept up by friction. They are having to fight so hard to stop themselves from conceding a whole wave of goals and they're able to do it so far. The battle continues, Friction, the next on the backboard to try and get rid. Low boost is going to make that a difficult job. And you can see that boost game is causing panic at the back. It's inevitable once you get trapped for that long everyone ends up uncomfortable on it you could see there casper had no boost kino picked it up behind him and thought hang on i'm the only one with boost i can rescue bail out the day here the message did not get through quickly enough in comms and a mistake like that albeit a forced one will be enough to draw out a second this puts them in a very difficult spot in game three here now despite all the hard work despite really nice mix-ups of pace we've seen we've seen them be very diligent and then occasionally just throw in a full send commit that's caught them off but it's still not been enough it's consistency that is key for may contain nuts here oh and to die for it's just waiting for this ball comes off the wall they kino not able to touch it on and just almost allows way too much space for to die for to shoot that one home of much very much a uh, uh, from the midway line long goal and you know, unfortunately, when you give in so much space to a team like May Contain Nuts and a mechanically strong player like to die for, I mean, they're going to take those opportunities. And, you know, when they come to fruition, you're up by three. Yeah, I think we, we've really seen the case of what, what it's like when they have to come and push. When they're behind in a game, it's always seemed like White Rabbit don't have the answers because May Contain Nuts just seem to lock in and have that midfield battle under full control. And Snowy there goes into full one's main mode, hits it off the side, self-pass with the catch and finish just too fast onto that one. And yeah, it really is seeming like the case where White Rabbit want to push forward and play aggressive that the gaps it creates are just becoming fatal for them. Yeah, no one home there for White Rabbit Gaming as well. Rotations to get back you need to be speedy when you're up against such a quick team like May Contain Nuts. Kino takes a shot though, kept up by Snowy. Four to nothing. I mean, with a minute to go here, Jota, you'd imagine that scoring four goals is is quite the task, and and maybe a little bit impossible at this moment. Yeah, they are sort of like playing a choose your own adventure story, but their choice is like you can sit back and defend and you won't concede anymore and you'll lose one or two nil, or you can try to get the lead back and you'll have a pick an even worse poison and lose more. They aren't really good choices to choose from. You do feel that this game was out of sight as soon as they pushed for the offense, conceded those two big long clearances. That put this one almost beyond doubt. And this would put May Contain Nuts up to 3 0 in the series staring down the barrel and that's the situation as a player for white rabbit where they just have to start thinking okay the next five minutes we will do everything we can and see if it sticks and if it does then we'll do the five minutes after that i mean do you expect the technical pause to possibly come out from white rabbit gaming here as well do you think you know we're going in of course to uh to game four you know you'd imagine you want to to take that technical i think yeah, I mean, because the thing is, a lot of people are advocates for taking them after two and complain that you wait to 3 nil, it's too late. I think the first two games, obviously both being 2-1 games, both where they got the lead, 
like the game plan was showing good signs, even if they weren't quite able to get across the line. This game being a blowout like this, I think it would make a lot of sense. The only argument against it that I could really think of would be that they've had so long during the game. I think the last two minutes of gameplay have been a technical timeout effectively on its own. But they have indeed called one. I can confirm. See it in chat. The second the ball dropped, they immediately said timeout. They're going to see what they can do with an extra minute on the clock here. All right, so, you know, time to strategize, time to chat to your players. What does Weak Casper, you know, bring to the table here that's going to allow his team to to bring it back? You know, as you mentioned, it's a little bit late to to do it in, in before game four, you know. We're, we're on match point here. May containers, you know, are sitting in the driver's seat right now. And, wow, what a what an uphill battle for them to... You know, to come up against a Jota. I mean, we did see reformed beat MCN yesterday. And, you know, I think all of us were kind of secretly hoping that even the chat vote there was quite high. You know, were we going to see another upset? But it doesn't seem to be the case right now. Yeah, it does seem to be business back as normal for May Contain Nuts. And that's what you expect from players of this level of professionalism with this much experience. It's what cuts them apart from those below. It's their ability to deliver with consistency. I think if I'm weak, Casper, here, the things that I'll be talking about is primarily shot count, I think, is the key issue for them. The White Rabbit Gaming, they're a very capable team. They're good on counterattacks. They're just not getting enough opportunities to open up to give them that scoring chance. Last game, they only had four. And when you're getting outshot 12, to, 12 or 15 to four, you can do almost anything. And the game is going to be skewed against you. The answer to that, of course, it's very easy to say, just shoot more. It's certainly easier for us to say that than for them to do it. The sort of way I would look for them to open it up, I would be talking about that third man is lurking more, sort of cheating up a little bit towards middle boost on your rotation back. Be ready to take those cherry pick counterattack clearances. Look for demos on that when you're rotating back in on defense because a demo when you're on defense to relieve the pressure it's how they got one of their counter-attack goals before and i really do see that as a potential way to get consistent opportunities against may contain nuts well jota here we go right game number four and may contain nuts in five minutes, they can close it all out to continue through to the semifinals. White Rabbit Gaming, they need everything in their bag of tricks to pick up a victory here and survive in the series. I think it's going to be a tall order. We know they can do it, but they need this uh, technical timer to work in their favor. Yeah, they will definitely be talking about just one game. Focus on this game. We'll take one and then we'll go from there. Focus on the next one. There is no time to be thinking about the task of reverse sweeping because thinking about reverse sweeping may contain nuts or anyone in a best of seven is always a very scary prospect, one that will put you off. For now, they need to worry about what to die for can do on attack. We said a permanent danger. He's looking to do that with the dribble. We do have the answer for it this time. The first minute will go by with them having kept out that is objective number one last game they conceded early they've got objective number two as well we casper the captain putting the ball on his back carrying it full length over snowy and it is that aggression from friction i don't think he lands the bump on to die for but forcing him to stop was plenty good enough yeah it doesn't find that hit but just exactly goes in and causes you know a little bit of interference allowing we casper just to get the dunk there and take it home and again we see the lead here being brought by white rabbit game and they want these kind of maneuvers they want to get those bumps and plays in the box and allow a second or third man to be able to shoot against may contain that so, so far leading here almost snowy shooting the goalie but it's gonna be darth though picking that one up from the left hand side oh so they they, they never uh are behind for too long yeah as quick as you start smiling take a moment to breathe for white rabbit you're immediately told absolutely not coming down off the ceiling snowy opened the pitch up for that opportunity but look i think it's white rabbit they have to accept that even if they defend well there's a chance that the times may contain nuts are just going to do things maybe like that from to die for there are going to be moments well, you will make mistakes, you will concede. They just need to be ready to get straight back on the counter, create another opportunity of their own. 
I don't think holding on to a 1-0 was ever going to be the way that they could win this one. Yeah, you have to just keep on scoring, right? You want to be able to extend that lead. You want that safety net to be much wider. You needed a second and a quick one as well. But, you, you know, you've allowed May containers back into this game through that gorgeous Darth goal. And now you need to see what you can do. You're three minutes on the clock in a very, very important game. You're four White Rabbit gaming. Kino, though, passing out to friction, but interrupted by Darth. Can Darth bring it all the way down? Oh, takes a shot, though. Casper was underneath it with a good save, though. But to die for coming in from that right hand flank, Kino, though, to push it out. Can they take it down? Casper already chasing the last defender, trying to cause a bit of mayhem. It's infield. No one is there. Friction wasn't fast enough just to come up seconds from touching that ball. Could have possibly scored, though. Kino. Um, getting unhanded, disarmed by to die for. He's going to try get the dunk. Gets past one. Oh, the pass to Snowy, though. Snowy sends it out to Kino. Kino saves it. Yeah, it has not worked out for them so far, but I do really like this long ball style that we're seeing from White Rabbit. They were looking for each other for diagonal passes. You can see they have players on the lurk, and it's nice. They're just having people sticking around turning at mid boost giving may contain out something to think about because of the other end may contain outs are giving them a lot to think about all the time the offense a permanent danger as good as the counter attack opportunities are there's always a fear when especially from snowy he has looked particularly electric this series whenever he's up there seems to be problems well casper they're taking an opportunity against the daffo who does push it out now, Darth, can he get over one? Does beat Kino, but Casper is there with the pickup and a full tank of boost. Oh, passes it off to Friction, though, who gets it immediately onto the nose of Snow. No, no redirect there from to die for, though. Snowy finds Darth in the midfield, takes the shot, though, kept up by Kino. Kino doing superbly well at the back, though. Hey, he has made so many decent saves today against the strong MCN outfit. Now, Darth again taking a shot, has no boost. Kino's there, no dunk coming down out to weak Casper, but there's no player to pass to except for Darth, who picks up his own 100, is going to jump off of the back wall here and gain the position again. Yeah, you see how comfortable MCN are to play the ball backwards. They don't mind knocking it back into their own half. You see they're comfortable on defense. Snowy just turns off, lets Darth take it next. They really aren't a team that you can stress. They look permanently relaxed, and why not be relaxed at <laughs> three nil up? On the contrast, White Rabbit permanently having to remain on edge that infield from to die for that could have been it that set the series snowy with the next for the double it does land two one up 30 seconds to go the task suddenly got a whole lot harder for white rabbit gaming and it starts there with we casper has to clear the ball goes into the back wall and snowy says thank you i'm gonna read this one like a good book Finds the second touch, brings it down, extends their lead. Only 30 seconds remaining. Perfect time for May Contain Nuts to jump back into this game. Oh, shot on there as well. Di Darth. Oh, finds the crossbar. Uh, no third man in to die for coming in to poach that ball. Does push to the corner. Is there going to be an infield pass? Doesn't find anyone. Kino has to push it out. And now time for a counter attack. Can I get a goal in? He's got the aerial mechanics. Kino takes the shot that doesn't land it. Seconds are remaining here for White Rabbit Gaming. They might just fall out here at the quarters. The ball has to go down. There it is. MCN will go through to your semifinals. Seems like the most popular choice against May Contain Nuts is really just to try steal that early goal, hold on to it and survive. It didn't work out for them, the game plan just falling. But <sighs> look, scoring first in three out of four games and losing all of them only by one, it shows that the, the plan is close to working. Next regional, you tighten things up, could be a different story. Yeah, I mean, just teams are now starting to do so well against this roster right and may contain us they definitely have a target on their backs and they know that you know as we go through the swiss and as we go through the main event you know they possibly can't feel too safe yes they're winning these games but teams are taking those shots and they're taking those games but alas main contain nuts 
They pick up a huge victory there and they do carry on. But uh, let's bring in the glorious Greybeard and he can tell us what he made of that one. Yo, I, well, I think you made the point in game two, uh, Jota. The, the biggest problem for White Rabbit Gaming, they took the lead three times in three separate games. But the, but the big problem was they kept taking it too early. Uh, they had early leads and then had so much time where they had to defend against a, a rampant uh, may contain nuts. And, uh, and, they, and they found the way and they, they, they did the job, Jota, for nothing. Yeah, I mean, look, that's one of those where may contain nuts. I, as strange as it is, I think they may be happier with that than when they go out and they smash up a team 5-0. Because when you go smash up a team 5-0, you're like, hey, we did great. We beat them. That's cool. You don't learn anything from it. You don't learn anything about your team. Whereas when you get tested and the other team do put up a strong, scrappy defense and they do scrap counterattack goals early on and put you under pressure, they they asked questions of May Contain Nuts. They put them behind three times. And it's May Contain Nuts to come back and take those all three of them in a row. Mm. I think I'm sure I'm sure he'll come into interview and say, I'm frustrated. We didn't score five per game. <laughs> we should be doing more than this. We're only winning close games. We're conceding goals. This isn't enough. You know what they're like. They'll never be satisfied. Mm. But ultimately, they can be happy that questions were asked of them and they proceeded to answer all of them. Well, we've had a last regional. Uh, we're pretty much on track for a similar scoreline. I mean, we've got two new teams in the quarterfinals today, um, but uh, the scorelines are kind of similar. We had a 4-1 we opened the day with, then a 4 nothing, followed by a 4 nothing, and, uh, and I don't know if we're on track for that in our last matchup, but uh, before we get there, your closing thoughts here, Muzz, on May Contain Nuts, White Rabbit Gaming. I mean, I think, you know, we've seen a lot of teams kind of slowly stepping up to make contenders on this roster. And we, we saw that through White Rabbit Gaming now. They they take the lead. It's a little too early. They concede. They kind of don't hold on to that lead. You know, they don't build themselves a safety net. And, you know, we just know that this roster is so darn good, right? They find each other on the field. The passes are clean. Darth Snow, they get the second touches off the backboard and just... You know, White Rabbit Gaming, we can see that there's improvement and they're growing. And I think this team is going to be formidable as we go throughout the RLCS season. We Casper, he's fighting tooth and nail at the back. He's trying to cut out pass and plays. Kino on defense, my goodness. He's there just blocking shot after shot of friction. Sets up the plays. He's doing so well on the assists. And I think just as we slowly progress with another seven regionals ahead of us, this White Rabbit Gaming outfit is going to look darn good. Well, Jota, you can always tell us how, uh, you know, how, what you felt about that. Yeah, it, it appears that Greybeard, you know, he's magically run away. But, oh, he's back. That's perfect. This, <laughs> this is what we like to see. You know, we, we <laughs> I saw suddenly on my feed, I saw a snowy yeah. appearing. Clearly, that's what we needed to get Greybeard back. We lured him in with the promise of a champion coming in nice and shortly. All right, fine. Well, well, you mentioned Snowy, and we are going to interview. And, and I think if we, when we do interviews tomorrow, I think we might ask the teams to... We want to see who else is on the teams. But for the moment, Mr. Snowador, Snowy, how are you, sir? I'm, I'm not, I, I, my opening question, well done on the win, but what the hell happened yesterday? Um, thanks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't really know, to be honest. Um, we, we didn't scrum a lot this week. Uh, I'm playing on a new controller. Uh, <laughs> Any more you want to add? <laughs> Bit of uh, lag, maybe? <laughs> yeah, no, I have, I have no idea what happened yesterday. But, you know, kudos to them. They played pretty well. Oh, all right. Well, as much as as much as Snowy's going to give a compliment, there it was. They played really, pretty well, Jota. I, I can't believe the... How, how much tougher can you get on make containers? They come out, they just swept their quarterfinal 4 0. The first question is, <laughs> why did you drop one series yesterday? Come on, guys. <laughs> Can't believe you've done that, Tim. I I just wanted to ask really, compared to compared to last year, um, do you are you are you feeling a difference sort of in the teams, not not your close contenders in finals, but sort of 
fourth place to eighth place, are you noticing much more of like any difference playing against them? Stronger defense? Have you had to change up a bit or sort of just continuing routine business as normal? Um, well, I mean, I've definitely noticed that those the teams in that range are a lot closer. Pretty much from, from second to about sixth, uh, there's, there's four or five teams that are very close to each other. Um, and they can all be they can all be really decent teams that kind of just intensely takes uh, the next step. And I don't really think we've had to change anything uh, in terms of game, like in terms of strategy. Uh, that kind of stays the same. Uh, I mean, we, we still play rock league. The, the teams are just closer and better. That's all. All right, Snowy. So, of course, reform take on Apex Gaming a little later. If they do happen to beat Apex. Do you guys see yourselves kind of uh, winning the grudge series or you don't want to jinx yourself? Um, yeah, I definitely think we'll win that series. Um, you know, we are the kind of players that will show up when it's necessary. And even though even though we, we, we never want to drop a series or even games, uh, you know, Friday didn't really make too much of a difference. Uh, you know, just the playoffs just play counts. Uh, and I think I think we're just not there for us, really. Uh, I think we'll, we'll come up things tomorrow and follow them. And Snowy, is there a, I mean, th this word, this phrase, super team, which is being bandied about, is that is that something that we should be banding about? Is that something you believe you are trying to be? Um, and does that add a, a weird dimension of pressure to proceedings? Um, well, I definitely think we should be going on about it because that was the whole purpose of this roster is to make a quote unquote super team. Um, but it's not, it's not really, you know, something that we focus on. I mean, we're just a team, we're just three players playing with each other, trying to play to the best of our abilities. Um, and um, it doesn't it doesn't really add any pressure, to be honest. We've been, we've been feeling, well, my team specifically has been feeling the pressure of <coughs> being expected to win for four or five years straight. Um, mm -hmm. So it doesn't really change anything. And I think it is fair, it is fair to on about that. Um, but yeah. Okay, cool, Joda. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was talking about it. I said that uh, before you came on, I thought that you might even be more happy with winning this game after going behind in three games to win all of them versus smashing a team out 5 nil every game. But I also know what you're like as a perfectionist. Just want to ask a simple question. Are you, are you happy? How did you feel about the game overall? Uh, the game today? Yeah, yeah. Um, it was okay. Uh, I mean... Like you said, I, I would actually prefer to win every game five now. I mean, that is the that's the ultimate goal. That's the kind of level we want to be over our opponents. Um, so yeah, today was today was okay. You know, we just got the job done. Uh, nothing really exciting or special, but nothing too great either. We our focus was on tomorrow. All right, and uh, last one for me here, Snowy. You guys have obviously picked up Knox. You know, new coach to your new roster. How's kind of that contribution been for you guys? Of course, him being an international coach as well. Oh, it's been good to have Nazis with us. Uh, you know, a bit of bit of fresh ideas, uh, and particularly because he's from NA, he has a bit more insight into the the new meta game. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's been nice to have him with us so far. Cool. All right, fabulous, Snowy. Congratulations. Well done. You make your way to the semi-finals. We will pick up this conversation maybe tomorrow, depending on how things pan out there. But uh, good luck for the rest of the series. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. All righty. So, we down one to go. We have 80K through to the semi. So, we have not a, not a, a different top four. Well, one a new addition to the top there, uh, 80K making top four, which means that now there's uh, May Contain Nuts, Orlando Pirates, Reformed, 80K, Red Crown, yeah, so there, there's five of them, and we'll see how that pans out and, uh, for the for the rest of the tournament. And we have one more best of seven to come. Our final for the day, and that is Reformed, who beat May Contain Nuts last night up against Apex, who had a rough opening regional, but here to make a statement, and we'll pick up that bit of deliciousness after the short break.
and welcome back here we are we have gotten through three or four 75 percent of the way through the day and ultrasm now now rejoins us coming from the seat and moving all the way over to the far side there so you get to you get to call some action now ultrasm Oh, very excited about it. It took me 45 minutes to get from that seat to this seat. But uh, <laughs> uh, it, it gave me some time to just cool down my voice. I watched um, uh, MCN doing a fantastic job keeping up that standard of themselves. And if there was one game in the day that I wanted to be on this side getting to shout this action, it is these two teams. I mean, Reformed yesterday put on a stellar show. And I cannot wait to see what they can do when they can unleash themselves really against the team that is really going to be pushed hard, I think, to try and challenge mm -hmm. them out of every role. Well, while staying with you, Ultrasm, I mean, talking about talking about Reformed, um, and, and, and you mentioned on Twitter earlier today that you went and watched the VOD mm -hmm. of, of that series uh, last night. And, and, and what did you see coming from Reformed? That, uh, was there anything in, in particular that stood out for you for how Reformed were playing? Mm -hmm. I mean... When they played yesterday against May Contain Nuts, the big thing that kept them in the game was they were able to shut them out in three of the four games. The defensive work from Reformed was incredibly strong. And that, I think, is going to be something that every team has to be worried about. If you can't get a goal past these guys, it doesn't matter how good your own defense is. They're just going to keep hammering it around mm -hmm. the other way. They had the counterattacks there where they were able to take off that pressure quickly and turn it into an offensive opportunity. They had the passing plays going there. Their backboard reads were fantastic. And even though there were one or two shots that maybe clanged off the crossbar, these guys are putting in accurate shots at power every stage. I don't know mm -hmm. if there's a single part of their game that really stands out, but the the fact that they just didn't let in a goal in 75 percent of their matches is maybe the strongest part of their, their outfit right now seems graybeard's camera has died and i think his audio with him Yeah, he's out completely right now. So, uh, unfortunately, he seems to be having this fun part. Just get used to the blackness as part of the <laughs> It's just coming back and forth. But Jota, you, for this matchup right now, reformed coming through there, and Skill Skill was ex-Orlando Pirates there. Uh, very, very good player, as we know. International experience and has come together with such a good <clears throat> quality team. Um, Greybeard, you're back. You were saying something. Am I back? Am I back? Am You're I here back. again? Oh my word. This has been a technical nightmare today between, I, I, I thought Jota was having all the fun, but uh, me too. Okay, fine. Yes, I, I am back. And what was I saying? Who knows what I was saying? Oh, I was talking about <laughs> uh, about ref uh, talking to Skillsteel on stream. And he said, if we're going to beat May, May Contain Nuts, everything has to go our way. Mm -hmm. And we have to execute our plan flawlessly and, cl flawlessly and clearly that's what happened. And it, and it did go that way. So big up to them. But now let's turn our attention to what's going to be happening before us. Our final quarterfinal match reformed up against Apex. And Apex for me are one of four teams. There's, there's Apex, uh, White Rabbit, uh, Bros, and ATK, which have been a bit of a question mark for me. They're all teams that I feel should have done better than they have. ATK have kind of turned around. They're in top four now. But Apex struggling last series or last regional um, but now here are making it today. So Jota, do you think there, I mean, I don't know how much of it you've seen, but is this, uh, I mean, Apex should be doing better than they have been so far. Yeah, they're a team that on paper, they should be back where Apex were last year. Really, this is a mm. team that we expect to be, if not in every semi-final, but in a significant amount of semi-final matches in that top four. That's where they should be pushing. Mm. I think last regional, you can cut them a little bit of slack and say, oh, they had some power issues, they had some internet issues, whatever. So a bit unknown. Coming into this regional, I was expecting a huge bounce back from them. I was thinking, mm -hmm. this is it. They're going to be back Apex. And I was expecting a very good Swiss from them. And I, I don't want to discredit the teams who beat them at all and say, oh, you know, they just beat them because Apex are playing badly. But mm -hmm. we saw Red Crown play today, who lost their quarterfinal red crown swept apex we saw white rabbit lose their quarterfinal 
they beat Apex 3-1. Apex scraped through a game five in round five of Swiss mm. to be here. It wasn't, it still wasn't the convincing performance that I expected these players, which it's, is, is that going to come back overnight? Have they slept on it? Mm. Have they got things wired up? I don't know. There's definitely still a lot of questions that they need to answer. Yeah, a bit of work to be done. And one of one of the players that was that they were looking at and trying out and didn't make the team in the end um, was was zero. Now doing very very well with Red Crown, um, and and on continuing the theme there, Ultraism uh, and, and Jota made mention of it. They they got through Swiss in round five. The previous regional they probably would have won. I think they were up against Orion Aces in an elimination match, and then Friction disconnected and their sub wasn't available, so they were disqualified, and that's how they didn't make it here. But still, Apex they shouldn't be going to round five of Swiss, surely. No, they they shouldn't. On paper, like you keep saying. This is an incredibly strong team. All of them very well known in the community, have been there for a long time. I mean, even this round, they had to go 3-2 up against Lupo Rosso. And Lupo Rosso is one of those formation teams that we're starting to see, wanting to get themselves up onto those rankings. This should be a side that is able to cleanly sweep any people who aren't really there at the top of the, the legs. And so if they're wanting to break into that top four, I think it's going to come down to two things, consistency and teamwork. And, you know, consistency in terms of both how they play as a unit and whether they've got electricity being a, a key <laughs> aspect of it. But that teamwork needs to come out. You know, they cannot mm. rely on their individual skills. And, you know, maybe the last leg was a case of they were just formed. This year, was, we haven't seen a single roster keep all three players together. So maybe it's just settling in at this stage. Still, though, from last night, worrying about the fact that they haven't yet gelled as a complete unit. If they can't do that, they are going to be picked apart by the top teams. And if, I mean, you, you couldn't ask for a bigger challenge for them here mm. now than Reform coming in as your number one seed. This is a team with three fantastically, maybe even higher skilled individual players than you've got on your team who are working well together. So uh, in the I see in the chat the uh, the fan vote is open hashtag AIPX or hashtag REF for the team or sorry RFM I beg your pardon for which team you think is going to win so keep those keep the votes going as we talk and reformed uh, you know a top a top four finish last week uh, last regional Jota and now uh, coming through top seeded after Swiss. It, it seems to be more than just they had one good regional. They look like they may just be the real deal. Yeah, I do think there's sort of like a tendency to to detract from the, the unexciting player, if you will. <laughs> I think that that's sort of the branding that Skillsteel has acquired because he wasn't the flashy, exciting one. And it has sort of left him a bit overlooked. I, I I think ultimately this is a player who's won a ton of regionals. He's got mm. all this experience. Like this shouldn't be a surprise that Skill Steel's new team is right up there. The 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 dynamic that I think is interesting though is that although okay, yes, you know, they're a great team, lots of respect for them. Don't be fooled. Apex are going to be really happy to be playing them right now. <laughs> they came mm. through as bottom seed three and two. You come through there, you're thinking, oh, we could be getting make and take nuts. We've got no mm. chance of winning a quarterfinal. So purely because that's where they're being compared to, they put themselves to be compared to. Suddenly, I think that they look like a really easy opponent to Apex. Right. And Apex will be licking their lips and thinking, oh, reformed, nice, easy team. We've got a great bracket draw out of this one. All right. Well, the results the results are in. And surprisingly, and, and I don't know if this means... Uh, there's just a lot of Apex fans in there, but it is. The vote has gone to Reformed, but the percentage is 55%. So that's relatively close given where we are. So that's the fan vote. They believe it's Reformed. Ultraism, agree, disagree. Uh, I think it should be a much bigger margin for Reformed, I must admit. This is a good team. Mr. Lowe has been there ever since playing with Papa Capes, I think it was back in the okay. day. Skill still renowned individual mechanics. Archeon, one of the most improved players that since the beginning of RLCS last year. I really have backed Reform since the beginning. I said from, what, two weekends ago, Reform was my team, my so, Dark Horse team. So definitely so, Reformed. Okay, so you're going Reform, Jota, definitely. Reformed or Apex? 
um, has to be reformed. I think okay. it will be closer. No, I think I, Apex I, will be better. That's, that's all we've got time for. I'm going to throw over to you. I'm also going to go with them. But now let's get the action going into the game. I'm going to throw to the casters, Ultrasm and Jota for our final quarterfinal match. Ooh, Jota, this is going to be a game, right? I, I mean, the, the crowd seems to definitely think it's almost evenly split. You and I, very confident in reform those. Is it just, are we not reading what the crowd is saying? Or does, does Apex have something in, in the back that uh, is going to surprise us here tonight? I think they're all believing in the Apex bounce back. If you look at the team sheets, this is an Apex team that should be doing great. I think we're both just far too cautious because we've seen teams before in every region. You see teams on paper that you're like, oh, wow, this is going to be the one. And they never quite gel. They never quite get things working. And I would love for Apex to come and give us some evidence that they're gelling again because what a treat that would be. I would be the first to bow down and congratulate them for it. But until we get evidence, I think that you have to put respect on what reforms have been doing. Yeah, I, I must admit, the rest of our series tonight have been basically sweeps except for that 4-1 that we started with. And I would love to see this one especially go to the, the real nth degree, all the way to a Game 7, maybe even Game 7 over time. You know, we can dream as casters. But I think if it did, we would open ourselves up for an incredible storyline that SSA is starting to prove to be. It's going to start out with some early aggression here from Apex. And if we do manage to see Apex challenging it at the top with reformed challenging out MCN, we could have really a top six that is completely unknown right now. What a dream that would be, especially you think sending two teams to Worlds. You would just love for that second place to be a massive question mark that we fight over all season. I think if Apex want to get involved in the action at the top, they need to get there quickly before they start to fall behind, of course not making top eight in region one will hurt them significantly in points and there's not a lot of wiggle room especially if it does become a heavy tie mm. reformed however they got off to a good start they've got off to a slightly more timid one in this game still still nearly opening the scoring but you can see they're rotating relatively deeply here mm. archeon goes all the way back for boost to have it covered they are not wanting to take excessive risks at all Right now, I'm, I'm noticing a lot of composure actually coming out from both teams. Obviously, a best of seven game number one is a chance to feel out your opponents. Um, but we're not seeing anyone really diving into this for now. Defunct trying for a shot across there, actually nearly put in by skill steal, but he clangs it on the upright, gives it away though, gives original a bit of space, puts it up, and the shot is there. Langstar finishes it off and opens up the scoring for Apex. Yeah, it's going to be a good confidence booster for them to get going nice and early. Get the first on the board, however, as May Contain Nuts taught us, scoring first does not mean everything by any stretch, especially this early in the game. There's still plenty of time. You still feel as well reforms have been playing safe. This is where the gloves are going to start to come off. They're going to start to push up more, take more risks. However, things are going to get very bad for them very quickly if they give defunct space. It's not just original it's not just like star all three of them big names big power putting that into the bottom corner now that little one goal lead we said it didn't mean all too much now they've doubled it game one has a very different turn to it slow starts and this is what we meant when we said that all six players on the field have a lot of individual skill there defunct reading that double backboard touch beautifully there to place it across there from a very difficult angle and Lackstar now doing a lot of work to fight that across the goal line there didn't have a second person to find it out but it is now reformed being pushed onto the back foot for a lot of this match they've got work to do they've still got half of it I think the real question now comes as to it's not about how you start like you said that first game the first couple of moments when you're just getting warmed up it's about how deep your pockets really run yeah, we're going to get to see what happens when they get put under pressure. This is a position that Apex haven't been all too used to so far this season. One they're used to from last season. They're going to be under a lot more pressure for the last two minutes. Now the skill seal has pulled one back, though. Defunct with that clearance on the wall. As a player, those are the most frustrating to concede because I'll tell you for free, that is not a touch he'll be at all happy with. He will expect better from himself there on the wall gets far too much on it and it pinches out 
middle off the wall and it gives so many options to the offense to get that one back. Just one loose touch and punish with precision. And I think that's going to be a big story coming out here between these two teams. One missed touch, one small play that wasn't a clear that they were wanting. Massive props goes out to Mr. Low there for that pass towards the center. That was that pace. Blackstar with the flip reset is actually set up for Defunct. He's not lined up though, so he can't take a good shot. But both teams able to put in good mechanical skills, have the right ideas, know where the weak spots are in both teams. And it seems like Reformed going up for more than not just their first double commit on any of these things. They've been punished for it twice already. They cannot afford to be punished again if they want to bring this first game back. Yeah, they do seem a little bit nervy on defense very quick. Oh, definitely. And Reformed certainly shows the intention that that's what they want to do. Going for these aggressive 50-50s, going up onto that backboard like we just saw. Skill steal now, meeting this on the wall, getting a touch out back towards the center. Archeon decides to leave that for Mr. Lowe. Good communication there, but the shot wide because of that double commit once more. They don't have another one to come out, and that is terrible for them. Defunk picks up this loose ball and just a little bit over aggressive on the attack leaves skill still in midfield Archeon doesn't get a good touch pinched it back towards his net and i think apex could not have wanted a better start than this I must admit, it seems Jonah's mic is cutting out, guys. We uh, apolog apologize for that. Uh, we will get that fixed as soon as possible so you can hear her wonderful voice. But she makes a very good point. This first game going towards Apex, this underdog team, at least from the caster's desk, uh, and just a little bit of an underdog from the, the chat, the Twi Twitch chat. But what an aggressive performance from them. Ten shots apiece for both these sides. We did see the matchup there earlier where these two teams were very, very close. But then more saves coming out from Apex kept them alive for so long and got them that two-goal lead. So we're going to check with Joda. Joda, are you back? Just say 10 words and we'll find out from Twitch chat very soon. The answer is no, unfortunately. I see Greybeard has come back here. on. Uh, a much, much more magnificent and manly face there. But um, Greybeard, that, that was an interesting place for you to jump in, right? Apex taking that first game. Uh, yeah, and surprising and, and surprising us. Uh, so, But yeah, good for them. And this is what we wanted to see. We said they were underperforming, but maybe now this is their time to perform. So what does it mean if you beat the team that beat May Contain Nuts? Uh, and, uh, I don't know what it means, but it's very, very interesting. That's what I was saying at the beginning, right? Is if Apex can actually challenge Reformed, it opens up that top position completely. It means the points race is much closer. Last year was pretty much predetermined that it was Bravado and Orlando Pirates the whole way. Now, sitting with what? Three, four, five potential teams fighting it out for two positions means we might actually go all the way to the last thing. But we're going to have to get through tonight's final match first. Apex happy to take off their first one, but I think it's going to be a revitalized reform to take to the field. I have no doubt that it will be, and uh, and uh, if they can carry this confidence forward. But you know, they the biggest complaint reformed had about themselves was was uh, executing to their plan. So that's going to be the big big deal for for this game for them to get back to their plan that they know works. Getting back to that plan. Uh, you said you chatted to Skill Steel. Have they given off any sort of a hint as to what they like to play? Uh, not really. Uh, he was. He wasn't. He didn't go in depth, other than saying that they're feeling pretty good and that when they do, that they are getting closer to having consistent execution on their plans, and that when they do, they shouldn't be losing. Yeah. 
No, you can see they did it yesterday. They did very well yesterday, nearly giving off an early open goal there. Uh, here, a minute into the second game, and a good shot there from Original, saved off there. Archeon having to just get it out, still the ball, scrappy in front of the net, pops out just far enough. Original now tries to dispossess skill steal, but pays with his life for it. Defunct though, challenging Archeon at the back line, tests him, gives Lax some space to go up and over now. Wants to pop it out, does get it past one, sends it very high. Defunct's up there, but cut Oof. off by Archeon. Man, but they are, I'm amazed at what they're doing with the pressure. Now a demo play in front of the net. This is excellent work from Apex. They have reformed under the cosh right now. And now we've got a bit of control from Archeon. Bumped off the ball once again and right back into an Apex push forward. Yeah, this is something very reminiscent of those old teams that we said always used to dominate. You know, the Bravados, the Orlando Pirates. Something about SSA Rocket League is that it has to come from lots of pressure. Long pinch down the field by Skillsteel to nearly slot that in but the long plays the big pressure building that controlling of the midfield is how we really kind of define ourselves in ssa and apex is doing that fantastically right now all right joe is back i am indeed hopping back in <laughs> quick as you like you know nothing happened again just everyone gloss over that part that didn't happen Okay, I think maybe Apex probably don't want to gloss over that one. They're probably going to want to hold on to it very tightly. That game really was... And it was not one that, you know, they took from force by Reformed. They sat there and waited, and then they stole it off of them as soon as they made a mistake. It could have gone either way. You did feel this second game really has started with similar vibes as well. It's been very end-to-end. -end. It's been very cagey. It is going to be small, small opportunities to open up. That demo could have been exactly that. You see, as soon as there is that one demo, that one something to open play up, immediate danger. So much danger. And it seems like Reformed not respecting how weak they are on that back line. They've had two shots that went goalwards for them and they just went wide. They could have been down. And then, you know, coming in with that demo could have had it punished so quickly just getting away with their life and it's back into Apex's attack. They've been on the side of the field for the large majority. They've been denied so far for three minutes. Lackstar, very comfortable to sit back and great rotations, you have to say, that's coming out from Apex to be able to constantly regather themselves and relaunch that attack. Yeah, they have been comfortably, hang on a second, <laughs> and clearly not things so comfortable. Just called out a pause in this moment. Don't know what's going on there. That was actually an apex pause. As you said, apex looking comfortable. They immediately all went quick. Hang on, tech pause, please, guys. However, I mean, you're right. that Their rotations do seem to be on lock. They've been playing relatively offensive, which always does give risks of facing counterattacks. But currently, their touches have been consistent enough that... We haven't really seen reform to break out onto any full fast counterattacks. No, not at all. It's it's been difficult to find that space to get your your progress down the field once you do the defensive work that you need to. We did just have a quick uh, problem with original who was lagging a little bit, so uh, was a, a little bit of a problem there. But we're going to be jumping back in now with the kickoff, sitting still at nil nil, and with a minute thirty left on this, there seems to be a goal straight away off kickoff. I'm not sure if Reformed was not ready for this, but they didn't challenge there with skill steal. Maybe just unaware that the game had continued onwards. And so uh, Chatbox was open and he didn't see that it was carrying on. Couldn't move at that beginning. And we're just going to get a little bit of uh, a call. <laughs> That's Are the we... strangest thing you'll ever see, I think, okay. in our RCS. <laughs> I really think that might be the strangest you will ever see. They're coming back from their pause. I... I, the admins have repost again. I'm, I would expect, I don't want to go on a limb too much and read into what the admins are going to do, but it did seem that if they weren't able to move, I would be very tentative to think that that goal would stand. You would expect it to go back to where it was before. They have just confirmed in chat. We will be going back to nil-nil. And this is what we like to see, right? I'm all for yeah. all the pauses. We go back, we run it back, we make sure we've got everyone's internet right. Because in a situation like this where everything is on the line, 
there is there's no room for people to get scared. We don't want to lose the spectacle because of poor internet or dodgy restarts. We want the purest, best gameplay we can get. Man, right with this being already such a tense series where it's a minute 30 left and you decide the game by potentially just that, whoops, didn't press enter to get back into the game. That would be a horrible boy, but thankfully our admins are on the case. They've got this and we're back into the proper action. The way to define this has to be through the incredible play that we've seen so far. And that's promised for the rest of the series. Yeah, reformed. It's such a difficult spot for them. This game could go either way and there's such a huge gap. If they can find the winner, we can just steal out what could be one goal. This could be all it takes. And the longer we get through, the more likely it seems that this is going to be a one goal game. Skill steal. How has he dealt with that one on the line? He had to just park his car, put it in neutral, sit there and wait for it to come. I think basically if he moves, flips, does anything, he own goals. Had to just have the composure to freeze up. But what a difference this game is going to make. We could be one all in the series or we could be 2-0 for Apex. The underdogs could be halfway to their win and both posts deny them Apex. They cannot find the all important goal right now. How many more shots are going to come out? This one could be the, the real deciding one. Miss the low makes no mistake. Slows it down there and even gives skill steal time to come back. Original just cannot get it out. Try to look for Defunct there. And Skillsteel looking for the bump just sends Mr. Low with a top center shot. I mean, Apex has tried hard on the other side. They've put in three long shots that just bounced out with no defenders home. And then that last one with Skillsteel nearly putting it in. Somehow still reform, pull up that one goal lead. And with 10 seconds left, Apex may have just lost their one game victory. Yeah, it has been completely pulled away from them. This could be the most frustrating lesson zero. They can keep this one up. Archeon with the pinch out. What a great touch from him. This should kill it with a bump from Mr. Low. Actually, that ball does stay up somehow. Finally does drop and reformed. So clinical. They survive a barrage. Frankly, they should have conceded. It felt like I don't know how... It was defense and the posts combining well. Good play from them and potentially some weak shooting from Apex. Who knows? All the stars aligned for Reformed. They got that really. It was just one chance, wasn't it? <laughs> and Mr. Low, the man of the moment to place it when it mattered. Oh, man. I don't know if it was weak shooting there considering both teams putting on 11 shots apiece. And with, what, six saves from Reformed and nine saves from Apex? I think the three saves missing there for Reformed were just the open goals that they've got to add in a fourth bracket to get for the amount of backboard there that came to their savior because, man, Apex tested that goal time and time again, just unable to get that extra goal in there to bring it back. And the last desperate moments for Reformed to be able to pull it out. And like you said, though, Man of the moment, Mr. Low, having all the composure in the world to keep that game where it was and bring it back now. Reformed versus Apex, one apiece. Yeah, the closer the series gets, the more it comes down to one person stepping up, delivering the goods. It becomes hero time when it gets down to the wire. And Mr. Low, who else? The catch on his roof and his shot as well. It scraped the crossbar on its way in and it had to, to make it in. <laughs> and so quickly, their momentum, they will carry it on into this game. They were millimeters away from being 2-0 down in the series. The bumps off the kickoff leave Archeon some space to get the air dribble posted in. And the matter of millimeters continue as quickly as that within a minute and a half. They are now one all in the series and one up in game three as well. Man, I thought that was some 9,000 IQ play there from Apex. They went for the bump. They took out Mr. Low, but they did not expect Original to be able to carry it that well. There was a challenge from Skill Steel, but he was just beaten as he... Sorry, um, not by Skill Steel, by Laxar, I think it was. And the carry there was fantastic. Such a good play for Reformed to be able to start off this next game. And... I said they were going to be revitalized at the beginning of game two. Well, game three, I think the tempo is going to be even higher. Yeah, they're reminding us why this is. They are the team who went 3-0 and in Swiss in this matchup. Apex are the team who scraped through round five, game five, and reformed 
they were pushed really hard for the first two games. Crazy to think what could have been if things had landed slightly differently. However, that is something that Apex, they need to get that completely out of their mind, try and cleanse themselves of what's happened before. Blank slate at one all. They just need to treat this like they're starting nil-nil in a best of five because they can still do this. They've still been playing well overall, you have to feel. They just need to try and eradicate their previous frustrations as much as possible. Yeah, frustrations. That mental game is so important there. Mr. Lowe just being denied this time. The backboard not helping him out and hindering him instead just wide of the goals. Means he can't do it. Defuncto has been so powerful on these redirects of the backboard and just saved out by skill steal in this event. Original now looking for Defunct, trying to put it across the goal. Just a little bit too far. Gonna pick it up himself. It clangs off the post. And this time it just again skates past. Add that to the tally of times that Apex have been a millimetre away from scoring a crucial goal. It really does just feel like nothing is sticking for them at the moment. They continue with the offence, so this could be the one. Have a huge miss to low clear. We'll prevent that one. They're still playing well. They're still pushing on offence. You feel that, that something has to come for Apex soon, but then every time there's a counter-attack reformed, they look so deadly. They do. Giving up this midfield ball, though, opens things up here one more time. Shot towards the center. Archeon misses it. But thankfully, Mr. Lowe, savior of the last game, savior of this one so far, manages to clear it towards the side. Still Apex straight away back into the attack. Defunct trying to fight it out in the corner. Now Mr. Lowe going to slow it down. Take it easy. Does manage to bait out the 50-50 and pulls one up the wall, meaning there's a deficit in the back line and it could come to cost them. No, original denying it at the last minute they've still got work to do and they can't do it they're not up to the task that unrelenting pressure to pull it forward great awareness and the whole team here from reform to get involved to finish it off by skill steal this was all on archeon though you cannot take anything away from the quality of pass there the angle which he's gone up for that he's pointing towards hitting it backboard for the double tap so everyone has to angle for that because that's where he's put his bonnet then at the last minute he flicks his nose away from it catches the wheels and it's that misdirection the actual touch itself was not crazy if he got that and it was obviously telegraphed that was the touch it wouldn't have done anything but he just sent everyone the wrong way the last little flick to get it with the wheels completely able to wrong foot the defense and they're all left there on the ground waiting but i think back and it was you yourself you're talking about how when they upset may contain nuts it was a game that reform built entirely on defense scrapping the ball out with big saves and you know what you can see how it clearly seems to be something that's just on demand for them they have the ability to just put up that brick wall oh 100 percent right to get a goal past this reformed side is a monumental task and uh, apex did very well to do it in that first game now they're going to be on the defense once more oh the shot from mr low goes high so far apex has not been as in control of this game as they were in the first two uh Certainly not, and considering the 2 0 scoreline. And I don't know, we talked about how deep the pockets are going to be. And so far, Reform being able to get it. Another long shot goes wide. The Funks trying desperately to get to that original, trying for the second touch, but he meets Mr. Lowe straight away on the wall. Yeah, and they're constantly back at it. Another <laughs> one, skill seal off the post and the crossbar. I don't know if anyone's tried to keep count of the amount of crossbars and posts we've had this series. They will have lost count already, I guarantee you. So close so often. And that's just the case on defense. You want to cover the most angles. You want to constantly be thinking, how many places can my car reach? And skills still clearly went, yeah, it goes behind me to the right hand side. I've got it covered, but he's playing such fine margins that that's what having it covered looks like to him. How has Mr. Low got that as well? I don't believe it. It shouldn't matter with only a few seconds on the clock, but that is just stupid. How have they kept a clean sheet? Please explain. I don't know. I, I genuinely have no answers there. You say who's been trying to keep track. I know of at least five attempts there from Apex that were beating the defenders. They had it in, but it hangs off the uprights, the crossbars, every bit of structural integrity of this field. I don't know if someone shrank the pitch by 2% for this Apex side, but man, they tested it time and time again. A much lower shooting game by both sides. 
but just as potent from both of them. And that, that still could have gone either way. It really could have done. It was just like, uh, it's, it's, it's so weird. So, I mean, how, like, you, it can't be, can't be consistent. It can't be doable. And then they just do it every game. Like, is this just, is this just how reformed play? Do we just have to rethink our idea of what defense is and what a shot that should be a goal is? Like, I'm starting to get, I'm starting to fall for this with this witchcraft that they're pulling, their ability to get every bounce to be in their favor. It's like they're playing Rumble right now with the, the little punching bag just by the edge of it, being able to knock that out at any stage. Still five saves coming in from Reform there, showing what stalwarts they are in that defense. Uh, I said earlier that they were incredibly good on defense. Uh, we talked about it with MC, and they're coming through again right now. And maybe it's just calculated. They know exactly where the margins of the goals are, so don't need to make any saves that aren't uh, absolutely necessary. But it worked for them this time. I still don't think Reform is going to be feeling super comfortable going into Game 3 like they've got this. Or Game 4, sorry. Yeah, I mean, you can't be comfortable when your main method of defense has been <laughs> scraping it off the inside of the post. But if there's... If there's one thing that reformed are not, it is they are not young school kids. This is a team, as their name alludes to, with ridiculous amounts of experience, both in terms of age and maturity, but in terms of in-game experience as well. Well before RLCS came to SSA, all these players were knocking around, and that should set them up well for situations like this where they need to have that lead on lockdown they need to keep the composure oh, and no. skill steal with oh, a no. whole pitch to aim at hang on Whoa. oh my goodness that was nearly a disaster for reformed skill steal oh. will be thanking Archeon no doubt for bailing him out that time I don't know if skill steal was going for the bump there at the end I saw he came down really hard and really static with no boost in the tank, so I had no chance of being able to get to it faster. But somehow Archeon still gets that dunk at the end. And it came through that early double commits from Apex. They went up with one and no one got a touch. They went up with another and still the touch eluded them. And somehow Apex, just the smallest margins again, keeping them behind. Reformed though, happy to get up that first goal. Event at the end of the day, the score sheet doesn't show how the goal came in. And Skill Steel is just going to be happy that it did go in at the end. Yeah, they may have made scary work of it, but ultimately that was the first chance of the game and they buried it. Unlike last game though, so far we've made it over a minute. They've not let Apex get off even so much as a shot yet. This game's been played a lot more in the midfield, you feel. Mr. Lowe challenging that one early as well, not wishing to let them build up, not wishing to let them get the shots. And it does seem like a more sustainable way for them. As good as they are at getting the ball off the goal line, it's not something that you want to be relying on. Oh, no. That's that's not exactly the strat that your coach is going to be pulling out. And uh, this is looking a little bit better from Reformed in terms of their structural play. They're being able to crown out this orange goal. Still have to always be worried about that counter-attack original coming up there. Very good awareness from this team to be able to push up and not overcommit most of the time, being able to still rally back, but always having two or three in attack and try and make whatever whatever small margins they've got count for themselves. Have to be worried about the one-two passes though, and this time it's Archeon that's denied by the crossbar. Skill still nearly matches that and pitches it against the same side of the net. So no extra goal there for Reform just yet. Blackstar even having to do a bit of work there halfway through his flip as he comes back into defense. Yeah, that passing play was absolutely divine. And again, it's the touches that miss direct. He jumps up for it. Looked like he's going to take the 50-50. He angled his calf the 50-50. And just at the last moment, a flick of air roll to open things up. And that is how all the best players do it. They keep it unpredictable. You don't know what angle their pass or touch is going to come out at till that last moment. And Archeon saw his teammate. He had full trust he was going to be there. And that is not the first time specifically from him we've seen him do that for reform. So that is now, like, once someone's done it to you twice, <laughs> you get no more warnings. Like, you, you've had your chances now. They have to remain aware for the rest of the series that those passes are going to be lethal. All it takes is one perfect touch to split them in half.
Yeah, 100% reformed, proving time and time again that their passing plays are so good. And this one, though, denied out there just in front. Unfortunately, no one able to get back from defense. Lovely little pop up here. And Mr. Lowe meets it just in front of Black Star's nose, puts it center goal, and a loose ball goes awry. Apex seeming to lose a little bit of that patent structure. Yeah, starting to lose that structure. It's difficult position to be in because they had a game plan. They came in, they threw off lots of shots and it wasn't enough. And it's a very tough mental position to be in when you feel like nothing you do is working, nothing is landing. Again, <laughs> the post this time, I don't even know if there was a scoring option to your angle out of that. Regardless, Apex able to get as close as the post and no closer. Jodo, what does this do to your mental game now? Apex already the underdogs in this. And like you say, everything that they're trying is not even them failing at it. It's not even them missing the touches. It's just being denied by pure providence at this stage. How do you rally from that? It's This is the sort of situation where you have to dig extremely deep. I would, I would expect them to come and take out their technical timeout pause after this game it feels like the way that it has to be done if they go three one down facing all those match points they do need a break because this game to me has felt like very much a continuation of the last yeah at this stage definitely the back line here for apex not looking as strong not being able to control the midfield as well as they were in the first two games they look so strong when they were the ones applying the pressure but as soon as it's taken away now, the 50 is coming out there. Skill Steel makes no mistake on this one and puts the nail in the coffin here in game number four. But just little loose touches like this, little miscommunications where they're grouping up together and reformed with the patience and the composure to be able to just wait for those touches and then take a clean shot down to the other side of the field. Yeah, you talked about pressure and whether they could maintain that composure and keep winning in that manner. And they have passed that test with flying colors. They have fully answered your questions and more. It's going to be a second game in a row where Apex are shut out unless they grab a freebie goal here at the end. It could be nice for the confidence. Even that one. I mean, come on, guys. That's good. You can't do that to them. Even when they're getting to zero seconds for the dead time goal that would have meant nothing they still end up finding the post and it does end up being back-to-back -back shutouts. Mm. It's such a tough position to be in facing three game, three match points and they do indeed take the timeout that we thought they might. Very good call there. Absolutely critical right now for Apex. They have shown in those first two games, they showed that they're here to play, that they are a team who is capable of taking reform to it. They won the first game. Second game was just in the last dying seconds that they gave it away, but held it so tight the whole time. This has not looked like the same Apex side. I don't think reform has really boosted up their own skill that much, but Apex has let things go. And I want to see them just calm it down for a second and think about how they want to approach this game and at least shake off those crossbar attempts. Yeah. And it's something I like to see. I think last year, when they were first implemented, I, I really did feel like the, the, the tactical timeout was massively underused in SSA. We saw a lot of the top teams, Bravado famously never taking them against Pirates in all of their games against them, whatever the scoreline, however the situation, they always just want to keep in their rhythm and not take the timeout. But it's it's a case that it can disrupt your rhythm a bit but it disrupts your opponent's rhythm far more. And there is just this placebo factor always going to the next game thinking, you know, we've taken the time out, so it's going to help us. It's going to be in our favor. Just that mental belief that, mm. you know, you've changed something now, so the game's going to be different. It's that little boost that sometimes can be all it takes in a series as close as this, where the inside of the post or the outside of the post is the difference between a hat trick or a clean sheet. Oh, 100%, right? That mental game is, I think, the only thing really separating these two teams right now. And I certainly didn't expect this to be as close as it is still. Uh, on scoreline, on paper, the last two games weren't close at all. But in the series as a whole, I still believe that Apex has a good chance to bring this back. And I'm still holding on for that game seven. Yeah, the series has been slowly slipping more and more in favor of Reformed with each game, losing the first, scraping the second, winning the third without conceding. But 
a lot of scary shots. Game four was the most routine yet, you feel. They kept the ball in the midfield, did not concede as many shots. And yet we're going to get a pause. <laughs> Just you thought we're getting back in. Their tactical timeout has ended and very quickly become a technical timeout with some connectivity issues. It's original having some issues again. And like... I, they're joking in chat as well, like, oh, you know, you get an extended time out here having fun with that. But I can tell you for now, from a from a playing point of view, that as much as, oh, they're getting extended time out, you know, they help cool down reformed. There is nothing more mentally damaging than playing with connectivity worries, yeah. especially not even for him, but for his teammates, because they both, every time he goes up for the ball, they have to worry. They're thinking... Is he going to hit this well or is he lagging a bit? Mm. It affects your positioning. It makes you hesitate a bit more. And especially coming into a series that's been as closely pegged as mm. this one with a zero game margin, you need to have full trust in your teammates at all times. There can't be any hesitation. You're 100% right about that. We do seem to be going right now. So we'll see if originals there. Like you say, though, is that mentality going to come down and cause his team to hesitate? Because I think that's been Apex's strongest um, suit right now is their cohesion. The fact that they've been rotating so nicely. The fact that they, when they go up and they look for that backboard, someone has been there to always follow it up. And haven't seen much in terms of demos, though. Uh, Jota, you are the queen of destruction. That's got to be a little bit disappointing to you. It's a little bit disappointing to see. And I think, you know, it's it's always an option, right? When, when a team is losing a series, there's always the option to just go nuclear and try blast open the game. I don't know if it's something that would favor Apex the way they've been playing in this situation. Because what demos are best for really is creating opportunities and creating openings. But they, to be honest, they, they have had those openings. <laughs> They've had the openings. They've just not been able to convert them. So I don't know necessarily whether demos would help them. But it's always something you can consider floating in. I'm certainly surprised that we've not seen more from it from Reformed. All the Reformed players last year were on relatively demo-heavy rosters and relatively demo-heavy on their own. But... Clearly, in this new roster, the way that they play is very calm and calculated. Well, Apex already trying for some physicality, getting ahead very nicely at the beginning of this game. Just an open goal opportunity from Laxstar goes awry. And then another attempt there for the bump, just being denied once more. Now it's back into the counter attack, though. Ball finds its way across the net and finds its way into the waiting arms of Archeon. A quick counter attack there. Lackstar not managing to get it out. Just picks it up from Mr. Lowe. Pumps it out the corner there. Not sure how calculated that was, but efficacious it is indeed. Yeah, look, I said that I wasn't sure if demos were going to be what it would take to make the scoring opportunities they already have go in the net. But I am more than happy if they press the nuclear option because it will be great content for us to find. Picking up another demo here. They do seem to be playing with pace, really attacking the touches already. Apex out the gate, defunct another really aggressive jump on that one. It seems to be what they've decided is, OK, we are just going to go foot to the floor offense. And to be honest, it's how they conceded too, being so foot to the floor on a counter-attack. But, you know, sometimes that's just a risk you've got to take if you want to break the deck. I think they're coming up to some 13 minutes here straight without having scored. Yeah, you got to try something different. And if what you're wanting to do, if what you think your team needs is to be a little bit more aggressive, go for those 50s, try and just unsettle your opponents a little bit more, then go for it. You've got to try something right now. And at least like you said in the, about the break, just doing something, just having a different idea kind of gives you that confidence and sometimes it can work out, catch your opponents off guard and we see this attempt once more. A little bit more aggression coming through here. Lackstar has been doing so well off the wall. Kind of pulls out original into that as well. So opens up a little bit too much contestion there in the front lines and may open this up for a counter attack now from Reform. A waste of risk of going so hard and so early. Hang on a second. Off the backboard. This is a huge chance. Defunct Archeon off the goal line again. Another demo comes out from Laxar. We are up to four or five already. We're not halfway through the game. And yet still, they're getting all these demos. And when Reformed needs someone on the back line, there is somebody there to scrape it out. 
somehow. I mean, the number of close saves coming out here from Reform throughout this series has been remarkable. Uh, arguably one of the best defensive teams in Sub-Saharan Africa, and they've shown it now. A nice pinch comes off the goal line there to give Original a little bit of space, but does find Mr. Lowe's retreated back. Uh, it doesn't seem like any of these long balls going to work out. This time, Original's pinch doesn't go the way he wanted it. Fine skill steal in the center, but Lackstar up to the task of making that save. Up to the task, indeed. And he has to be, really, with the bar of defense that Reformed have set. It puts great pressure on Apex to defend to that standard as well. That infield pass coming out, you see these double commits that they're making on offense. It is a consequence of how fast they're pushing. They want to be up early, which means they're trying to predict the plays before they happen. It will lead to misreads, and it's just the price they're willing to pay, but it's going to cost them dearly. The counterattack, a lethal angle from skill steal. This, not an easy shot at all. To get 113 on that back post, such a clean hit. We talked about it time and time again. I'm going to sound like a broken record, but it is that consistency and that clutch when they're put under pressure and they get that opportunity. They are clinical and they do score. Oh, original having to come through. You talk about consistency and that's kind of the point I made when we we're on the, the um, table, the bench, the brackets, the... The desk. The desk. <laughs> we'll go for desk. Right. Yeah, ta table was close enough, but... It was coming down to consistency. The fact that this Apex side needs to work as a team, be able to get that good communication together and not double commit gives them opportunities like this. Still, they have not managed to find a way through this backboard here now for 14 minutes from Apex. And they've only got a minute left to keep themselves alive in this competition at all. Yeah, a minute left and everything is just fading away from them here. They threw themselves out of offense. They got in the face. They got all the demos and it still didn't work. We talked about how it can really give you a morale boost to just have a new plan. But well, <laughs> when you come in with an initial game plan and they have the answers for it after a game and a half and then you make a new one and that's still not working, that becomes just as demoralizing as the boost you originally got from the new plan was. So frustrating for them, for the Apex team. They will just be wondering, what do they have to do to score here? They forget even winning. Getting one goal back seems like an impossibility. 15 seconds to go. We are looking at a back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back shutout from Reformed. Man, that is demoralizing, but it kind of comes down to what we expect now from this Reformed side. The fact that they're able to keep every team at bay for so long is just an incredible sign of their mental fortitude. It is going to touch down now. It is going to be the end of the road for Apex Gaming. Reformed, the brick wall team that they are, holds it out three of their games in a row, a complete shutout of their opponents. It comes through many saves, seven here from the site. And while Apex tried as they might, and they've <laughs> got to give them some credit for how hard they tried time and time again, they just weren't able to break it away except for that first game. Yeah, and you said this is what we're expecting. As someone who didn't get to catch the May Contain Nut series that they played, I was more focused on the elimination games going on in the Swiss at the time. I did not come in expecting this from Reform, but I've been thoroughly shown the level of this defense. It's really... It's not the sort of play that we've seen from anyone else. It's quite a unique style to it. Certainly scary for us as commentators. I want to bring in Greybeard immediately, as quickly as we can. Let's get him back in here. I want to hear what he thinks, how he felt about that defensive display. Uh, it was a, Well, listen, there were two things, right? There was the defensive display, but also, you know, you hear about moving the goalposts. And it felt like with Apex, the goalposts had been moved because they were just not getting them between them. It was it, it was pretty tough for them. And Alt, you made the point a few times throughout that. I mean, it does have a demoralizing effect. But, um, you know, after that first game, there was a little bit of a feeling of like, wow, maybe we're in for something here. But uh it seems like Reform just needed that first warm-up, get themselves back into the thing, and and from there, they controlled the whole thing, Alt. 
Oh, 100%. You know, you were worried that this wasn't an Apex side that was showing their best foot. And I think they really did a good job of showing a good foot forward today. They came through blazing. They came through with team cohesion. They fought, especially in those first two games. I love to see what that team could really do. Because I think, I made the point on Twitter earlier that there were very few teams who could stand up to the MCN onslaught that they brought against mm. Reformed. I think there's very few teams that could have stood up to what Apex brought, especially mm. in those first two games. The fact that they didn't get away with most of those, that might have just cost them. But whoa, against the lesser team, that would have been a stomping. So, uh, Jota, you said you missed the uh, MCN game with Reformed last night. But uh, having seen them now, you think they're a, a, a contender to start challenging that second first place area in SSA? I think you're stupid to not put them in contention, right? Okay, even if you think they haven't got what it takes to win those series, there is nobody who is ever going to have a comfortable series against a team like that because even a team who beats them, it's been shown very clearly by them now that if you want to beat Reformed, you're going to have to work very hard for every single little slice of the cake that you want to grab. So um, that does mean that in the semi-final tomorrow, there is a Swiss round, a rematch from the Swiss round. Altruism, have Reformed got it in them to do it twice on the trot? Yeah. Yeah. After watching Ooh. them tonight and their ability to hold it off, um, it's best of seven again tomorrow. So they've got a game if they do drop one or two at the beginning. But their stalwart defense is something that I think every team, like Joe just said, is going to have to be worried about. If they can just hold their back lines together, the number of fingertip saves that they managed to pull off in both yesterday's game and today, it's maybe not as comfortable, but it does show that they're able to reach goals that most teams probably won't be able to. It's going to be up to uh, the MCN side to see if they can pull something brand new and never seen before out of the back line because it might be needed. Well, we might now be able to get it from the horse's mouth. by So by virtue of the fact that this was a series that did not contain nuts and it did not contain Orlando Pirates, it means we have a new face in the interview. So we get to interview from Reformed skill steel he self skill steel how's it and welcome oh <laughs> thank you very much yeah first time i'm on stream uh last season it was kind of uh slowly taking taking charge of interviews so i have been put in the position to to do it this time so yeah i'm i'm happy to be here and uh yeah thank you all much. right well listen great performance so you know we had a chat on stream uh the night before the regional thursday night and we were talking about you going up against may contain nuts and and you were basically saying you know you're always positive you always, you're never going to a game going we're never going to win but you were talking about how everything had to go your way and you had to execute to your plan so clearly this weekend so far it's moving it's gone in that direction um yeah look so so the may contain nuts um series was from from our side pretty good we were we were pretty happy with our pretty performance good. in that uh in the same breath i can say that may contain that's probably did not play their best game on the day and that's kind of what a rocket league is right is best team on the day would win um but nonetheless we are very happy with our performance uh in the swiss um and today as well we we're pretty happy that we could we could bring it back uh, kind of dumb down the pressure a little bit tell ourselves okay just hang on you know calm down um, it was only the first game, so I'm, I'm really glad to uh, bring it back. So. Nice. Yeah, and I just wanted to uh, bring you some lovely stats. I just went through and add up the numbers from ball chasing. Um, you did not concede for the last 21 minutes of live game time. <laughs> the back 21 minutes, four and a fifth of a really? game kept dead clean out okay. from game one. I wanted to ask you um, that because your side certainly um, you're on the older of the average ages, but as well as just the age, in terms of raw game experience, you've all been around a long time. I wanted to ask how you how you find that experience ties in with your defense. Um, yeah, so I mean, firstly, I have I have quite the unique look on on age in Rocket League. You know, I have been putting in an immense amount of time in this game. Um, just keep on grinding, working, focusing on specific things, um, not letting myself fall behind at, well, at some stage it's going to happen you know, you know it's in, it's inevitable but i've really been trying to not let the age thing get to me uh, which i think i've been as has been working out pretty well 
Um, but in terms of like the defensive things, you know, they say the, the, the older you get, the, the worse your reactions get as well. Um, which I think today probably didn't bite me too badly. Uh, made some made some good saves, but it was a team effort all around. I mean, Archeon and Lowe made some incredible saves as well. Um, and I guess I was just in the right place, right time, uh, considering I'm like 40 years old, roughly. <laughs> but it was, it, was, it was good nonetheless, yeah. I'm very excited to hear that you are still so motivated for this game. And what I have to ask you now is the only weakness that I really saw in terms of your defense, and you managed to get away with it a good couple of times today, was there were a couple of long balls that went very, very close to your own net that you didn't have much of a reach towards. Yeah, I, I see the eyes there are definitely recognizing that. Yeah. Is that something that you as a team <laughs> just go... You know what, if one of those things goes in, we just shake it off because we've got to push forwards. You've got to keep that momentum going. Or is that something you need to be a little bit more careful of? Um, it is something that, that we should be a little bit more careful of. So so we did try and kind of play quick on the counter-attack, be more aggressive on the ball, um, counter-attack on their mistakes. Um, and then every now and then we kind of lose ourselves, lose control of where the play is going and maybe third man is a little bit too trigger. So those long clears kind of catch us off guard in some in, on some stages, but I mean, I guess we're gonna start working on replays, uh, see where we're lacking, and then see how those players kind of catch us off guard, um, and then work from there. Hopefully, next time you say, "Oh, cool, you guys covered every long clear. Good on you." So <laughs> we are we, we we literally we are gonna work on our, our, our mistakes, and yeah, as you as you mentioned, there are some kinks in the armor store, which early season we we are working our best at, at fixing it. Very few, though. Let's be fair. Very few <laughs> defensive mistakes. So I've got to Thank find you. something for you, man. I mean, no disrespect, I promise. Uh, you know. So, Skill, uh, congratulations. A top four, a guaranteed top four finish for the second regional in a row. Um, but surely, uh, celebration short lived because you've immediately got to be thinking forward to tomorrow. So, what happens between now and semi final two tomorrow? Um, yeah, so look, we. We are aware that, that we have beaten Macon Play Nuts and Swiss. Um, and I have also mentioned to you that, or I've mentioned to people that we now have beat them once, which means it can be done, but that doesn't mean that they played their best. And mm. I'm the kind of player that would like them to play at their best and see where we stack up, right? So coming into the semi final tomorrow, we're going to carry that confidence over. We're going to play our game. We're going to do the best that we can. And I'm fully expecting Macon Play Nuts to to not let off at all. Because I know the guys personally, I know Snowy, I know Dark, and I know Tidaipo as well. And I know they're not the kind of players to just say, cool, free win, let's go. They're gonna put their all into it and I'm expecting a very tough match. Nice. I wanted to um, purely ask that, so you've secured top four again, of course, well done. And in regional one, you've got that third, fourth as well. I think that in that one, we were maybe expecting you to go a lot closer with the current Pirates team when they swept you out. Do you do, do you feel that you're playing better this regional than last regional? Or are you feeling that your team's already starting to develop? Or uh, uh, do, you, do you want to tell us that you're going to go great places, but you need a few more months to get there? Um, so we, we have been putting in a lot of time um, with our coach Fisher, he has been helping us a lot in replay reviews. We've been really trying to drill in our heads the kind of mistakes that we're making how to fix them. Um, and I guess up until the Swiss yesterday, we just kind of clicked on, on some things. We still have a few mistakes that we're making. Um, but some of the things I've really started to click, you know, Archeon is not turning so much and ball chasing, so that's good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we, we, we have been trying our best to fix our mistakes, actively thinking in scrums, how we're going to fix them and not just drive around, play the scrum out and then afterwards say okay cool we should have fixed this we should have fixed this we're trying to fix it in the moment i guess it's just it's just a good weekend like i said rocket league is just who plays better on the day so i'm guessing i'm i'm hoping we keep it consistent which every rocket league player kind of hopes for um but we we really feel that the time that we're putting in is reflected um, mostly i think it definitely is being reflected at this stage doing so well so far I gotta ask you now, especially in this matchup against May Contain Nuts, because arguably if you can beat them, you can beat whoever comes up out of the other semifinals. You've obviously got a lot of experience in the SA scene as a whole. You pay a lot of attention to replay analysis, etc. How do you feel that sharing an ex-team or sharing two teammates now, you know, that you used to play with 
more than half the team that you're going to be going up against. How do you think that it feels <laughs> affects how you approach these games against May Contain Nuts? Um, I mean, firstly, I still have an immense amount of respect for, for Snowy and for Darth. There was no ill feelings going out of the team. We still chat. It's still We still support both. Both teams support each other. Like when we beat them yesterday, they're like goat steel and they just reply on the tweets like the tweets. They're like good people. They, they still want us to do well. Um, so I think the mutual respect and the feeling is there that, that we don't want to push the other one down and kind of say, you must lose, you want to win. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's an immense amount of respect between us six players. Um, and going into the Make and Day Nut series tomorrow, I think everyone's going to expect the best out of the other team. We're going to give it our all and the best team on the day is going gonna, is gonna to win. What a fantastic uh, statement to make there. And that is it's truly wonderful to hear. And um, I'm enormously pleased for for you, for Ark. Uh, you know, Archeon's a, a player who's been around a long time. He's been on the fringes of things. Uh, you, of course, uh, a, a multiple regional winning team from last season. Um, and then, of course, Mr. Lowe coming out of retirement and grinding hard. And, and, to see, and to see the fruits of his success has been wonderful to see. So, uh, skill steel, big, big congratulations and good luck tomorrow. And and my final comment is uh, the beard game is strong. Good for oh, you and yes. <laughs> good for you and good I mean, luck tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I wasn't blinding any people. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I gotta keep it going somewhere. <laughs> right, but thank you very much. Thank you. Awesome guys. Thank you very Thanks, much. much. All righty, guys. So that's it. The, the end of another regional Saturday and our, our, our final little chance to chat up at the table. Um, so uh, we, we're going we're gonna to close it out now as we look forward to Championship Sunday. And uh, one, as we look at the bracket, uh, one new team that is uh, here tomorrow that wasn't last regional, of course, ATK replacing uh replacing red crown gaming on on championship sunday for the se our first semi-final tomorrow up against pirates xd and then reformed against may contain nuts as we've just spoken about and we would expect a pirates mcn uh final once again but perhaps ultrasm perhaps we are, will be delivered an upset Perhaps, man. I must admit, if there's a team that could take down Pirates, ATK has been on that fringe twice in a row. This weekend and two weekends ago, they came up against Orlando Pirates in that Swiss stage, and they took them to a Game 5 every time. What an incredible clash that's going to be. And then, of course, the, the good-natured rivalry that we've set up now between Reformed and May Contain Nuts, setting up on the other side. I, I genuinely don't think that this is a two-horse race anymore. I think it was very mm. clearly a two-horse race last year, but this year is, without a doubt, the closest weekend we've ever seen in Rocket League in Sub-Saharan Africa. Well, certainly the three to six spot, and, and Snowy pointed it out, seems to be very tight. Do you think we're on the verge of Jota becoming a three, re at least a three regional team? Um, uh, based on what we've seen this weekend i i really hope so and certainly i'm glad to see it from the atk players because i know that from atk specifically people around the organization they were very high on their team that was one of the rosters especially with guys coming in from the netherlands people were talking like this is a team that should be up there competing they should be mm. up in the top four they could be the contender so when i saw them come fifth eighth i did kind of think oh no okay here we go. Get used to Orlando Pirates again. Have them and May Contain Nuts locked in. So to see them living up to the hype just on a two-week delay really does bring a lot of promise. And again, we've seen Reformed. Anyone who plays against Reformed, you're going to have to scrap hard to beat them. So mm. I, I don't know if we're there yet to call it. I think we should wait till Sunday and see what mm, Pirates course. come out and deliver. But ATK are in a good position and poised and they are looking, I think, better this weekend than they were last weekend. Mm. They were maybe a little bit rough in Swiss, but I've been completely sold back by how they played today. All right. Well, the possibility is small, admittedly, but there is the potential as we stand here right now that uh, we could see an ATK reformed final. And wouldn't that be a massive shakeup to the scene? We'll see how it plays out. But that is it. 
Championship uh, or regional, the Fall Cup Saturday comes to an end. Championship Sunday is all that remains. Three more best of seven matches to go. And we will bring you all that action tomorrow. But from me and Jota and Ultrasm, it is now our turn, I think, to go play a bit of Rocket League. So peace out. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>